My granny, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know his llama, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Llama and Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the activities of the Jotham Down store have been shoved far in the background since its owners have been appointed as the co-chairman of the Pine Ridge War Savings Staff. As we look in on the local community today, we find the two bond executives holding their first business luncheon at Luke Spears Restaurant. Listen. Hurry up, Abner. Get done eating so that we can get the business meeting started. Well, I'm hurrying just as fast as I can. Hey, uh, Luke, uh, bring me a hunk of that coconut pie there. Abner, you don't want no dessert. Yes, I do, and that's my favorite pie. Now. Well, it don't come with the businessman's lunch, though. Um, It'll cost you extra. Oh, oh. Uh, never mind, Luke. I, I believe I'm too full to eat it. Yeah, I believe I'll go ahead and start the meeting. Eat as quiet as you can. I, yeah, I will, I will. Uh, can I have the rest of your butter there, Long? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. The official business luncheon of the Pine Ridge War Saving Staff will now come to order. Hey, pass me the bread, Long. Well, for goodness sakes, I can do it here. Yeah, thank you. Fellow co-chairman of the staff, the purpose of this meeting is to organize our campaign to sell the war bonds to everybody in our yeah, community. Howdy, Charlie. Abner, don't interrupt. Well, I Charlie Redfield is now passed by the front of the restaurant. I know it, but you can't say hello to everybody that passes by the front of the restaurant. Oh. Not during our give meeting. Yeah, excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, pay attention. Yeah, yeah. Let me pour my coffee. I see my sauce. I let it cool there now. Well, that's better. Now, Abner, don't be blowing your coffee. You oh, gotta cool it. Well, fan it with your hat or something. Oh, yeah, I spilled it all over myself. Yeah, I wish you'd watch what you're doing there. Yeah, let's see. <sighs> okay, that's good. Long, why can't we uh, get on back to the store and have this meeting? It's just me and you is all we're going to have. No, it. we got to have our business luncheon. All campaigns always have to start out that way. Well, why do they? Well, I don't know for sure. All I know is they're supposed to start out that way. Now, hey, shut up. Yeah, all right, just go ahead. I don't care. Finish my meal here. Well, howdy, Cedric. Hello, Mr. Abner. Come on in. Oh, honey, Mr. Love, what are you fellas doing down here, eating? Yeah, uh, we're having a business lunch, Cedric. Give her that stuff here and one thing or another. Yes, ma'am. Well, you're just the fellas I wanted to see. Oh, well, we ain't got time to see you right now, Cedric. Yeah, right uh, we're, we're busy, Cedric. Uh, go on over there and play the pinball machine. That's well, a good I don't, I don't want to play the pinball machine today. Yes, you do, too, now. Play a couple of games anyway, and then maybe we'll be through and you can talk to us. All right. I'll just play two games, though. Yeah, all right. We don't care how many games you play. Just leave us alone. Oh, that's the first time I ever seen Cedric when he weren't falling all over himself to get that idiotic pinball contraption to working. Yeah, well, let's forget about him for right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. better cool chairman, the uh, first thing we got to do is to get organized. Get organized? Well, what I mean by that is we got to, uh, to elect the, uh, the, uh, officer. Officer? Yeah. Well, we're already officers, Long. They appointed us cool chairman. Yeah, but that ain't gonna work out. We gotta have one fella that's actually ahead of this staff. Oh, one fella that's ahead of everything, huh? I figure we better elect one of us lieutenant co-chairman, maybe. Uh, lieutenant co-chairman? Yeah. Well, all right. If you think we ought to do it, I reckon I'm first. You know more about this than I do, huh? Good. Motion carried. Oh. Now, we'll vote by a secret ballot. Secret ballot? Yeah. Well, we don't want everybody to know how we voted. Oh, oh, you gonna pass that little box around and have them drop in them white balls and no, black no, balls? No, no, that's and lodge meetings, your thing. Ah. Uh, no, just tear off a piece of your paper napkin there. We can use that for ballot. Oh, yeah, 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 that's all right. Yeah, let's see, have you got a pencil? Uh, no, wait a minute, I've got one right here, a little stub here. I can do the end of that off without using a uh, You know what to do now, don't you? 
Well, I reckon I do. Just write down who I'm voting for. for what was it we're voting for again? For lieutenant co-chairman. Yeah, just vote for who I'm voting for for, for, for lieutenant. Is that right? That's right. Well, it won't take long at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's my vote right there, Long. You want me to fold it over? You said it's secret? No, just hand it here. Huh? Well, I don't want you to see what I'm voting for if it's a secret vote now, Long. It don't make no difference, Abner. There's just two of us voting, and I know how I voted, so I'll know anyway. Well, all right. You ought to put them in a hat, though, and draw them out of it. what you ought to do, not see how folks vote. Well, here, hand it here. Well, all right. Can't you write your name without law on your tongue now? Mom, you oughtn't to look now at my vote this time. I ain't time. looking at your writing. I'm just looking at the way you're writing. Huh? Oh, oh. The little stub pencil you carried for years. Well, I don't see no sense in having this election no way. I know how it'll come out. It'll be a tie. It always does whenever me and you vote on something. It's always one vote for each of us. Wait a minute. Here. Huh? One vote for Abner Peabody. Huh? And, uh, one vote for Abner Peabody. Well, see what I told you. Going, well, huh? looks like you got elected. Me? Yeah, two votes for you. Did I get two votes? Yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Peabody. Well, the land sakes. I dog is good for me. What'd you do, forgetting right the wrong name, Lord? I know what I've done. Now we'll vote for the chief co-chairman. Huh? That chief co-chairman. Yeah, uh, he's one step higher than the lieutenant co-chairman. Now, wait a minute here, Long. Now, that ain't no fair. No, sir, now, you ought to have voted on him first. Now, that ain't fair. Don't forget, now, no fella can hold more than one office. Yeah, just a minute, though. That lets me out, Long. All we can vote for now is you. Well, I reckon that makes it unanimous, then. Huh? Motion carries. L. Edwards is hereby elected chief co-chairman. Well, doggy, there's something peculiar going on around here. That ain't fair, Long. That ain't no way. You're done with your meeting here yet? No, Cedric, we ain't done. Well, I'd like to see you about something. You better go on back to the pinball machine. Don't interrupt us now, Cedric. Well, I done run out of nickels, though. Oh. Well, Luke will give you some change. Yeah, sure. Get a lot of it so you can play a lot of games. Now, listen, Long. Uh, let's run over at election again. Let's start it all over. I don't think I was ready. No, Abner, it's all settled. I, I think I hollered King Sex or something when you started No, this you never. Huh? You was elected lieutenant co-chairman and I was elected chief co-chairman. It's all settled. Yeah. Because we got too much work ahead of us to waste time on them little old no-count details. Well, I still don't see how it was. Abner, our job is to sell war bonds, not to sit around and argue. Well, I know you're right about that, Long, but I still say it seems awful peculiar to me that you left the little office first. Now then, gentlemen, our first job is to plan out a big selling campaign. See, when I say gentlemen, I'm just talking to you. Oh, well, that's all right. I've been called that before. I know, but it sounds like I'm talking to a lot of people, but, you know, that's the way you do it, me. Well, you couldn't be. There ain't nobody here but me and Luke, and he's back there in the kitchen, Long. I know. You want me to call Luke in? No, he ain't in our meeting. Oh, well, you can call me gentlemen. I don't care. I won't get me. The chair is now open for suggestions on this. Huh? Uh, I say our first job is to plan out a big selling campaign. Oh. Now we're open for suggestions on it. Where, huh? Yeah, I, I got one myself. Oh, well, <laughs> good. Yeah, I've been studying about it. I think we ought to divide the whole town up into six or a half dozen sections and then plant one feller to be responsible for selling our folks in each section. Now, do, uh, divide the town up? Yeah, any questions so far? Well, uh, yeah. How come we didn't vote on a well, chief co chairman the floor first? Yet, oh. I ain't said you could ask you. Can, can, I, can I ask the question now? Mr. Peabody, the chair recognizes the senator. No, that's something else. Go uh, ahead. Well, you know me, Lom. I know you recognize me. Go we ahead. If you got a question, ask it. Well, I say, how come we didn't vote on a chief co chairman first instead of that lieutenant bit? Abner, that's beside the point. It's unmaterial and unelegant. Huh? Now, I figure that by using my plan, we can canvas the whole town in no time at all. Canvas a whole town? Yeah. Why, Lord, me, Lom, we'll never in this world be able to get that much canvas. Pine Ridge is a big place. It runs clean out there to Ed Beckley's place. I don't mean actual put a piece of canvas over the whole town, silly. I mean we're just going to canvas each house. Oh, well, of course, that'll cut it down some, cut out them vacant lots anyway, but it'll still take a heap to cover every house that away long. For goodness sake. Why are we putting these tents on our houses for anyway? Do their roofs leak? No, of course not. Well, I didn't think so. I know ours leak, but I never know what everybody else's did. 
Of course, I don't see what all this has got to do with war bonds anyway. Abner, we ain't putting no tents over nothing. All I meant was that we're going to go up to every house in town and sell the people. Oh, sell them what, tents? No. Well, what are we going to do with all them tents? I'll swan to goodness. Uh, take them on a camping trip? No, of course not. Well, we ought to at least take one along, Mom. You never can tell when it might rain this time of year. Abner, we ain't going on no camping trip or nowhere else. Well, I know that we better get a new chief co-chairman in. You ain't been in office five minutes, and already you wasted a lot of money buying a batch of tents we ain't got no use for. Abner, what I meant, we're going to go up to every house in town and sell the folks war bonds. Well, now you're talking. Now, that's a heap better than that tent idea. I'm for that. Come on, let's well, get wait, started. Well, wait, before we can do that, we got to plan out our sales technique. Huh? we got to study up different sales talks and contests and devices and stunts. Bazaars and clever ideas, and I don't know what else. Do we have to do all that? Why, well, sure. You can't just go out and start selling. This has to be organized first. Oh, oh, oh. Now, have you got any suggestions on any of them other things? Well, let's see our suggestions. Hey, Mr. Long. Uh, we ain't through with the meeting yet, said Long. Going back to your pinball game. Yes, Long. Uh, what was that question again, Long? I asked you if you had any suggestions for the sales campaign. Oh, uh, I don't believe I have. No, don't believe yeah. I have. No. Well, I reckon we better just. Take that up at the next business luncheon, then. The meeting's adjourned. Hey. Motion carried. Hey, Luke, bring us a check for the lunch. Hey, we're all done now, Cedric. What was it you wanted? Mom? I say, what was it you wanted to see us about? Oh, that, well, I'm sure it's too late now. Too late? Yes, Mom, I done used up too much of my money on the pinball machine, so I reckon I can't do it now. Can't do what, Cedric? Oh, I wanted to buy one of them war bonds from you fellas, but it's too late. <laughs> Granny's, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I don't get long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the co-chairman of the Pine Ridge War Savings Staff held a business luncheon yesterday to map out a big sales campaign. And as we look in on the little community today, we find co-chairman Peabody and Cedric Weehunt back in the feed room of the Jotham Down store working on some plan in connection with that campaign. This. Let's try it through once more, Mr. Abner. No, we got it long good enough now, Cedric. Uh, just recollect the new words to the song. Yes, Mom, I know I'm good. Well, come on, let's go tell them we're all set to rehearse a play then. Yes, Mom. Oh, let's look down the old pine tree. I got Cedric all learned good now, Long. Well, good, good. I, I bound it we'll be the head of the whole show. Oh, no <laughs> doubts about it. Hey, Grandpappy, have you got your part all studied by now? That's that, Lum. Are you ready to start acting, Grandpa? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've done read it clean through. I'm all set. Well, good. Let's get started then, Lum. Yeah. Doggy, I'd love to be in place. Yes, Lum. Boy, I want to be a regular play actor. Yeah. Uh, when did you say we're going to give this thing, Lum? Saturday night. Oh. Over at the schoolhouse. Schoolhouse, huh? Yeah, we're having a big bond rally to start off this war savings campaign that me and you are heading up. Oh, sure, that's right. Yeah, we're the co-chairmen's, ain't we? Hey, Mr. Lum, that's one thing I don't... I quite understand about this play that we're going to put on. Uh, what's that, Cedric? I, I can tell you whatever it is. I know it all by heart. Well, uh, what I want to know is, what what is it all about, anyway? What's it about? Yes, Mom. Well, along me, Cedric, you done read it, haven't you? Yes, Mom, but I, I never did understand none of it, though. Oh, well, it's just a play, that's all. Just something to entertain the folks to get them to come to this barn rally. Well, it's more than that, Abner. Right? Sure. So there's one reason why folks ought to put their money in war bonds. To keep down inflation. Help any it. Huh? Help any it. Do what to it, Long? I mean, keep down the cost of living. Oh. That's a dangerous problem the country's facing right now. Dangerous, huh? Oh, yeah. Once that inflation starts inflating and everything gets out of control, we're ruined financial. Never out of which way. Oh, my goodness, a lot. Prices will raise up higher and higher to where our money gets might not worthless. 
It does. And then finally, everything comes crashing down. We have panics and depressions and all such as that. Huh. It's just like that old lettered saying of mine, everything that goes up must come down. Well, I reckon. Huh. Uh, what was that again, Long? I said everything that goes up must come down. Hmm. Everything that goes up must... My dog is there's one old better saying I don't believe I can get mixed up on. Man, you just ain't trying. All right, fellas, now let's get let's the thing see, started. Now, everything that goes up... Adam, must... forget that. Now, don't stir up nothing. Well, I was just trying to think about it. All right, fellas, uh, do you all know what part you're playing? Yeah, I do. I'm Mrs. Jones, a housewife. Yeah, and I'm a farmer. Mr., uh, let's see, what is my name? Uh, Mr. Brown. Yeah, what's my first name, Long? It don't matter, Abner. Why, sure it does. Somebody says, hello, Elsie. Why, well, I want to know if they're talking to me or not. Well, nobody ain't going to say hello, Elsie, in this play. I'll now, I, I believe I'll be Bueller. Bueller Jones. I love that name. All right, that's yeah, fine. Bueller. That is a beautiful name. Yes, it is. Love it, love it. You know who you are, don't you, Cedric? Yes, Mom, I'm Cedric. Well, he means in the play, Cedric, you're Mr. Green, a white-collar worker. Well, I ain't got no white collar, though. Well, that don't matter. Well, my collar's blue, same as my shirt. Can I be a blue-collar worker? No, Cedric, now just leave it the way Lom's got it wrote. You're Mr. White, a green-collar worker. Yes, Mom. Are you in this, too, Mr. Lom? Yeah, I got a little part in it, Cedric. I'm Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood, a big merchant. I run a store. Yeah, how come you got the fanciest name of all of us, Long? Well, it just worked out that way. Oh. Uh, all right, let's rehearse this once now. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. All right. Now, the opening scene is Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood's high-class store. And into the store comes Ms. Jones. Uh, which Ms. Jones? Elsie? Yeah, Elsie. Oh, uh, well, that ain't me, then I'm Bueller. All right, it's Bueller, then. Oh, both of us. Well, good. Now, here we go. Everybody quiet now. Piedmont Linwood speaks first. Ah, oh, this is a fine day today. I wonder who will be my first customer. Ah, oh, here comes one now. It is Ms. Jones. Am I inside yet? Yeah. Ah, oh, how do you do, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood? Ah, oh, how do you do, Mrs. Jones? What do you want today, Mrs. Jones? Let's see now, where's my place? Hello. Oh, but I will pay cash for no, it. Wait, 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 you skip some lines there. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I want to buy a electric toaster, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood. I am sorry for Mrs. Jones, but I have just one electric toaster in stock, and I have promised same to Mrs. Smith. But I will pay cash for it. How much is same? Same is $10, Mrs. Jones. I will give you $12 for same, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood. Now, what is this same I'm buying, Long? That's the electric toaster. Oh. I am sorry for Mrs. Jones, but the ceiling price is $10. Oh, here comes into my store another customer. Oh, it is Mr. Green. Cedric, that's you. Mom. He said Mr. Green, that's you. Oh, I thought I was Mr. Blue. No, you're mixed up. You're Mr. White, the green collar worker. Mom, you oughtn't to give Cedric this part, colorblind as he is, Mom. Well, that won't hurt none. Come on, Cedric, read your part there. Yes, Mom, oh. Bro. How do you do, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood? I would like to buy an electric toaster for my wife. I never know that I was buried, though. Well, in this you are. It don't matter. I am sorrowful, Mr. Green, but same has done been promised to Mrs. Smith. And I will give $13 for it. Dog is how up there. Oh, I will give $15 for it. I will give $20 for it. Who will make it 20 Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Oh, so, Mom, what's this toaster made out of? Diamond? Just read what's wrote down there, Abby. Oh. Go on, Cedric. I will give $25 for same. Ah, oh, but Mr. Green, can you afford that? Yes, Mom, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood. I got a raise today and have extra money to spend. Oh, you got a raise? I must phone my husband that works in a restaurant. Hello, Mr. Jones, this is your wife doing the talking. Mr. Green got a raise, so you must get one, too, so I can buy electric toaster. Oh, that is fine. You got a $10 raise. Goodbye. Dog, it's my husband. Sure has got a nice boss. Well, leave out them comments, Abner. Mixes us up. Continue. Uh, now, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood, I will give $35 for the electric toaster. Wait one minute, Mrs. Jones. I must call Washington. Hello, Washington? I would like to ask you to raise the ceiling price on just one article, electric toasters. 
Thank you kindly. Goodbye. All right, Mrs. Jones, you can now have the toaster for $35. Ah, oh, thank you kindly, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood. All right, now, that's the end of Act 1. Oh. Sounding good, ain't it? Oh, wonderful. Now, now it comes Act 2. It's a few days later, and we're in Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood's store again. Oh. Farmer Brown's in there looking around. Farmer Brown? All right, Granddad, go ahead. You're Farmer Brown. Yeah, I know that. Reckon I ought to talk with our rural dialect. No, just read it like it's wrote there. Well, that's good, because I don't know whether I can talk backwards here or not. Oh, you can talk country. You have to put on a little green pad. Yeah, I'll try it. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Peabot J. Linwood. How high your price is there today? Well, that is on account of the following, Farmer Brown. Mrs. Jones' husband, who works at a restaurant, got a raise so she could buy a electric toaster. And in order to pay her husband that raise, the restaurant had to raise its prices. So now I have to raise my prices in order to get enough money to eat on at the restaurant, Farmer Brown. Well, I cannot afford such prices. I must telephone. Hello? Washington? Please, will you raise farm prices so I can afford to live? Thank you kindly. Goodbye. Doggies, I'm going to call that Washington feller up and ask him for something. Hey, up, Abner. Go on, Granddad. Uh-huh. Now I can afford your prices, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood. I will take one pair of overall size medium. Yes, sir, Farmer Brown. That will be $19. That's the end of the second act. Oh, well. Uh, sounding good, eh? Oh, beautiful. All right, here's the last act now. Who do we fall in love with, Long? Well, Mrs. Jones is in the store again. Oh. Mrs. Reynolds Jones. It's a few months later. Ah. Uh. Ah, oh, how do you do, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood? I would like to buy a new card for my electric toaster. I, I can let you have a nice one for $198. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Isn't that a little high? Yes, a little, Mrs. Jones, but Farmer Brown raised his prices again, and that made the food prices at the restaurant where I eat go up again, and so I had to raise mine again so I could eat. You had better have your husband get another raise. Yes, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood, I reckon so. He's making $9,000 a week now, but we just can't make ends meet. Oh, dear, oh, dear, ain't there something we can do to stop all this, Mr. Piedmont J. Linwood? Yes, Mrs. Jones, there is. And here is what to do. All right, come on, Cedric. Here's where you and Abner come in. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. All right, say one, two. Oh, you, you cut, cut down, down your old expenses, expenses and, and just buy what you actually need. need. To keep, keep all prices in line in this critical time. Put your cash in the war saving bonds. Hold down inflation. Put your cash in the war saving bonds. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> That's a masterpiece if I did oh, write beautiful. it myself. That is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that ought to show the folks how dangerous this inflation stuff is and learn them a lesson that... What they ought to do about it. Oh, sure. Yeah, it ought to. Sure. Had. Did you learn a lesson, Cedric? Yes, Mom, it sure did. Well, good for you. Yes, Mom, I'm going right over and see my boss and ask him for a raise. $9,000 a week. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know it's Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lom and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the Pine Ridge War Bond campaign is underway with co-chairman Edwards and Peabody at the helm of the war saving staff. Their bond rally Saturday night started things off, and now we find the two directors laying plans for the next step in the campaign. As we look in on the little community today, we find Squire Skimp in the Jotham Downs Store and Library talking to Lum. 
Uh, sit down for a second, Squire. We want to talk to you. It, well, all right, Lum. I can't stay long. I have an insurance prospect uh, waiting for me. Well, this is a heap more important than that. Hmm. This is about the big war bond campaign me and Abner are heading up. Oh, yes, yes. yes. We're the official co-chairman of the Pine Ridge War Saving Staff. Hmm. Pined by the Treasury Department. Uh, yes, I know about that, Lum. Uh, congratulations, too, oh. by the way. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, of course, now, Lum, I'm buying just about all the bonds that I can handle right now. Why? Well, I wasn't going to ask you to buy none. No. At least ways not right now. I just want to get your advice on something. Oh, oh yes. Well, in that case, I am at your command, Lum. I'm willing and eager to lend my assistance in any and every way possible. Yes, indeed. Hey, you can count on me, Lum. That's yeah. good for you. Now, here's what I... Oh, wait a minute. Abner, come on over here. I'm holding a meeting. Well, I ain't done putting up these grocery orders yet, Mom. Well, that can wait. This is meant business. Well, all right. Jeez, he's the worst one co-chairman I ever co chairman with. Mr. Morgan told must have made a mistake when he pointed Abner. Well, howdy, Squire. Oh, hello, Abner. Hello. Just sit down, Abner, and listen. Ah. Uh, now, here's what we want to do, Squire. Yeah. We want to get up some stunts or something that'll attract a lot of people. Something we can put up right out in the road there in front of the store. Hmm. Yeah. Something yeah. like, uh... Something like a circus. Well, no, not a circus, Abner. It's too big to put up out in the road. Ah, hey, doggy, that would be handy, though. You know what, Lum? Just step right out the front door and you'd be at a circus. Yeah, let's do that, Lum. No, that's out of the question, Abner. Well, maybe we could get just a little circus, just about a half a ring circus No, or just forget that. Huh? We ain't got room for nothing like that. All we want is just one good attraction. Have you got any ideas on that, Squire? Well, uh, let me think now, Lum. It's sort of a surprise to me. Uh, uh, we figured as long as you used to be with a carnival, you might know some act or stunt or something we could get to come to Pine Ridge for a week or so and help us out. Well, uh, yes, I did spend a few weeks with a carnival at one time, Lum. Uh, purely a psychological study, however. Uh, uh-huh. I did it in connection with a course I was taking at Harvard at the time. Uh, oh, let's see. Charlie Redfield says you was a con man or something like that. What, what does that mean, Squire? Uh, why, uh, con man? Let's see, Abner. I should know what that means. Uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, in the vernacular of the carnival, uh, con is short for a concert, Abner, yes. You see, I handle the music with the carnival. Uh-huh. Well, I'm a great lover of music, yes, indeed. Love music. Well, how about it, Squire? Do you know anybody we could get? Well, I should be able to think of somebody, Lum. Let me think. Of course, we can't pay them no salary. No salary? About all we can afford is their room and board and expenses. Oh, yes. Uh, well, you'd be surprised what they'll do for a square meal, Lum. Uh, that is, I mean, uh, they're all very patriotic, and all my friends be more than glad to donate their services to so worthy a cause, I'm sure. Yeah, good, good. I'm proud they feel that way. Yes, uh, let me see now. I was just running a few names through my mind here. A few old associates of mine. Uh, yeah, I'll run them through there. Well, uh, there was uh, Asbestos Al, the fire eater. The what? Uh, the fire eater, Lum. Uh, blows fire out of his mouth and all that, you know. Come to think of it, though, he wouldn't be available at this time. He wouldn't? No, uh, he's out on the West Coast uh, working in an airplane factory. He's doing a settling torch welding out there. Well, he's yes, already he's... doing something patriotic then. Yes, yes. He sir. ought to be right good at that kind of work. Hey, did you say he blows far out of his mouth, Squire? Yeah. Well, h- how's he do that, Long? Oh, it's just some trick, Abner. Oh, more likely eats a lot of radishes or hot onions and stuff like that. More than likely. And let's see now, there was that Manny Blatt and his talking parrots. And a great novelty act, that was, yes. Novel? Yes, yes, indeed. What's novel about that? All parrots talk, don't they? Well, yes, Lum, but uh, see, these parrots uh, talk with a southern accent. They uh, did mammy songs. Always very popular around Mother's Day. I love that act. Well, let's get them, Lum. That sounds good to me, singing parrots. Uh, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I just remembered that. Uh, Man, he doesn't have his act together anymore. He don't. No, uh, it seems it disappeared one meatless Tuesday. Huh. Poor Manny is quite broke up about it, too. Got a letter from the other day. Yes, yes too bad. Yes, indeed. Sorry to hear that. Yes. Well, who else can you suggest, Carl? Well, let's see now. Um, the Marigold Sisters, uh, Gink and Vank, uh, McCloskey and Smith, uh, Pinkham and Praskins, oh, the Flying Potoskies, uh, 
Aunt Louie and his canine quiz kids. Uh, that was a great act, Long. Uh, great act. Which one is that, Squire? Uh, the canine quiz kids. Uh, see, Louie had a bunch of trained dogs that you've never seen your whole life, Long. Hmm. The intelligence of those dogs was simply astounding. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. One of the greatest acts I've ever witnessed yet. Yes, indeed. Those dogs were trained to do almost anything. Janie, that sounds good. Oh, it was a marvelous act. It's just too bad that we can't get them. Well, why can't we get them? Well, uh, the Army has broke the act up, Lum. Oh, I see. Louis went in the Army, huh? No, no the dogs did. Uh, Louis 4F couldn't pass intelligence test. Well, let's see now. Who can we get? I should be able to think of somebody now. Well, I wish we'd get Louis and his dogs. Marvelous it ought to be Marvelous. some act where folks are willing to buy a lot of war bonds to get in to see it or something like that. Yeah, very good idea, Long. Very good I'd idea. I'd like to keep them around here for at least a week. Yes, yes. Uh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe I know just a man, Long. And he's still in business, too. I believe we can get him. Well, good. Yes, sir. Uh, Neo Show the Mystic. Uh, what's he? Uh, mystic, uh, um, he's a fortune teller and uh, mind reader and all that, you know. Uh, he uh, predicts the future. Tell you exactly what's going to happen. Hmm. Greatest mystic in show business. <laughs> that sounds good. Oh, he is, without a doubt. Yeah, we set up his tent right out in the road, and folks will have to buy a war bond before they can get their fortune told. Why, yes, that's exactly the way to work it. And the more bonds they buy, why, the more the old show will tell them about their future. That's a good idea. Yes, yes sir, I believe we've hit on it, Squire. Oh, I know he's you a man. know somebody. Yeah, he's a man, I'm no yeah, doubt about yeah. it. Well, there's one thing folks always love to have done to them, get their fortunes told. All right, doggies, I'm going to get him to tell mine, I know that. Uh, are you sure we can get him, Squire? Well, I'm fairly certain, Lum. I'm not for sure, but uh, I got a card from him just the other day. Uh, he's staying in a hotel in Florida. I'll write him a letter tonight, Lum, and see if he can come up here. Grannies, can't you get hold of him quicker than that? We want to get started on this thing. No. Oh, well, uh, I could put in a long-distance call. Uh, that is, if you don't mind the expense, Lum. No, no, we don't care about that. We want to sell bonds. That's all we're interested in. Yes, yes. Go ahead and put in a call on our phone here. Well, I'll see if I can get him, Lum. I'll yeah, go ahead. Yes. I believe you'll come, Lum. Tell him to get here as quick as he can. Yes, I will, Lum. Don't worry about that. I'll get him started at once. I'm sure he can come. Abner, I want you to start making a lot of big signs advertising this fella. Big signs? Yeah, and then we'll get out some handbills and get Cedric to carry him around. Oh. Uh-huh. I'll make a public announcement. Uh, hello? Party line uh, Mammy? I am K. Skimp talking, Mammy. Uh, uh, however, now, I put this call on, uh, the, uh, bill of the Jotham Down store here at Lum and Abner. Yes. Uh, what's that, Mimi? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. You always got to find out how you feel. Uh, yes, uh, Lum's fine, too. Uh, listen, Mimi, uh, this is government business, so please hurry it up. You may as well tell her Abner's fine, too, because she's going to ask you. I know yes, uh, I, I want to, uh, place a call to Mr. Sam Neosho. Sam, the old show, uh, the Comet Annex Hotel at Miami, Florida. The uh, Comet Annex, yes, that's right. All right, Mimi, uh, rush that through just as fast as possible, please. All right. Janie, I hope he's still there. Yeah, Squire, can he sure enough tell what's going to happen in the future? Of course not, Abner. There's just some trick to that. No, well, no, there isn't now, Lum. Not with Neo Show. Neo Show is the real thing. He's a true mystic. Hmm. He actually has oracular powers. And when he makes a prediction, it always comes true. Well, I do know. I, I, I tell you, Lom, he's the greatest man we can Oh, get. I can't wait for him to get here. Doggis, could he tell me what I'm going to be doing next week or next year, Squire? Oh, yes, sir. And the old show's no faker, Abner. Granny, you know what he can do then? When he, when he's telling somebody's fortune, he can tell them what'll happen to them if, uh, in the future if they don't buy a war bond. So that would be very simple for him to do, Lom. Study that up myself. Yeah, could he tell me if it's going to rain next Monday? Oh, that's elementary work for him, Abner. Uh, could, could he tell how little Pearl is going to come out in her examinations at that nursery school? Oh, yes. Very simple, very simple, Abner. Oh, good. I'd better find that out then, right, little Pearl. I might save her a lot of work. Uh, can he tell how the next election for a president will come out or something like that? Why, he can predict the outcome of anything, Abner. No matter what Thank it you is, I'm going to get your call, Squire. Oh, yes, 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 it must be, must you be. You go ahead, Nancy. Yes, yes. Uh, hello? 
Hello? Uh, yes, this is Kim. Oh, all right. Hello? Uh, Sam? Uh, Mr. Neoso? <laughs> well, hello, Sam. Uh, this is Squire Skim. Oh, fine. Uh, uh, listen, Sam, I believe I've got a little job for you. Uh, no, just expenses. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you about it when you get here. It's a, it's a good idea. Uh, what's that? Uh, just a minute, uh, Lum. Yeah. Uh, Sam says he'll come if you pay his uh, hotel bill for him. Pay his hotel bill? Uh, yes, it uh, seems that he invested a little too heavily in one of his recent predictions. Uh, he predicted that Burnt Cork would win the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I don't get Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the Pine Ridge War Savings Staff is all set to inaugurate a new feature in its war bond campaign tomorrow. Co-chairman Edwards and Peabody have engaged a famous mystic and fortune teller who will read the townsfolk's future only upon their purchase of bonds. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner out in front of their Jotham Down store and library, struggling with a huge tent which they're trying to put up in the middle of the road. Listen. Uh, here, here, I believe that's straight now. Uh, can you hold the pole a second while I step back and take a look at it, Abner? Well, I'll try. I know, Islam, why do we need to put up such a big tent for a look at this thing? Well, we're going to need a lot of room, that's why. We ain't going to have no circus in here, are we? Of course not. Can you lean the pole just a little bit toward the left there? Well, that's all I can No, your left, your left, oh, the other way. I can't hardly hold it. I'll try it to hold uh, How's that? I reckon that's close enough to being straight that way. Can you hold it a little longer just till I get the stakes pounded in on both sides of the tent? No, because I don't know if I can even hold it up or not, Lum. This is the heaviest one tent I've ever seen in my life. Hurry up, regardless of what you're going to do. It won't take me long to get the stakes in. Well, just hurry, Lum. See, where about I put that hammer in? Well, why do we need so much room in a tent for a long? That fortune teller ain't no giant, is he? No, of course not. He's just going to have one corner of the tent. One corner? Yeah, we're going to put up some stands in the rest of the tent where we can sell war bonds. Oh. Uh, Granny's, I had that hammer here a second ago. Well, hurry up and find it, Mom. I don't believe I can hold this pole steady much longer. This thing is heavy. Well, for goodness sakes, don't let go of it. Or the whole thing will fall down. We'll have to start all over again. Well, I ain't going to let go out of a purpose, Mom, but my strength might give out. If that wind don't die down pretty soon, The I'm... wind ain't blowing much anyway. Well, something's trying to blow this thing over. Quit breathing so hard. Here, here's the hammer. Here it is. Right uh-huh. in front of my eyes, and I couldn't see it. <laughs> Look where it was laying at me. Well, I can't turn my head long. Just hurry up and get them stakes in, yeah. will you please? <laughs> Look at that. If it was a bear, it would have bit me. Yeah, what'd you say about a bear, Long? Uh, oh, nothing. Just an old lettered saying of mine. See, we're about to them tent stakes. Are, are we going to have a bear in this tent, too? No, no. Wait a minute. I believe I heard our phone ring. Huh? Dad, blaming it would have to ring right now. Hold the pole a few seconds longer, Abner, while I run the store and answer. Well, here, wait a minute, Lom. Uh, can't you pound just a couple of them steaks in before you leave? No, no, it might be Mr. Morgenthal called me direct from Washington. Something about our war saving stuff. I- I'll tell him to make it short. Well, now, Lom, I might not be able to hold this thing up that long now. Yes, you can. If you drop it, you'll ruin everything. Well, now, don't leave me out here at that bear, Lom. I can't defend myself. i got to hold this pole here. There ain't no bear out there. Bad gummit, anyway. Well, if there's any bears around here, get away. 
You leave me alone, and I'll leave you alone. That's what I'll do. What are Mr. Abner? Oh, my goodness, talking bears. What are you doing, putting up a tent? Huh? Oh, howdy, Cedric. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. I can't turn my head far enough to see who's coming. Uh, Cedric, can you see any bears around here any place? No, ma'am. I don't think I can. Let me see. Yeah, more than likely hiding. That's about what they're doing. Fixing to jump out on me at any minute. Where? Uh, Lom said there was a bear around here somewhere, Cedric. Be careful. Watch what oh, you're doing. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Cedric, would you find the hammer and pound in some tent stakes so as I can let go of this thing here? I can't hold it much longer. Yes, well, sure is a big tent, ain't it? It's a thousand or a hundred times too big. Now, just hurry up, Cedric. Hurry. I can't hold it. I is this going to be for that fortune teller that's coming to town tomorrow? I reckon so, yeah. That's oh, what I can't hardly wait to see him. Everybody in town's talking about it. Cedric, would you please quit talking and find that hammer for both me and this tent falls over? Well, I done found the hammer. Huh? Whereabouts are the stakes at? Why, they're laying there on the ground. Summers, look around, Cedric. I don't see them no place. Maybe Mr. Lum knows whereabouts they're at. No, you just find him yourself. Now, Lum's in the store there talking on the telephone. Hurry up, oh, Cedric. Well, I'll go and ask Mr. Lum. Hey, then. wait a minute, Cedric. Come back well, here. I'll be back directly. Uh, Cedric, the stakes are cut. They're right around well, here. Let's be quicker, Mr. Abner, on it. Oh, my goodness. I almost wish that bird come out and get me. I yeah, can't Yeah, honey, 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 honey. Huh? Who is that, Grandpa? Yeah, what are you doing there, Abner? Putting up a tent? Well, what does it look like we're doing? I ain't hard to stand out here and hold this thing the rest of my life. Yeah, see, so you ought to have some help there, Abner. You can't put up a tent that big all by yourself. I know that, Grandpa. That's what I want. Yeah, see, you ought to have some help. I ought to have it. I recollect one time Ollie Ziegler tried to put up a tent by himself. Grandpa, he had... will you go in the store and tell Cedric to bring the hammer back out here so we can drive up these stakes? Is Cedric in the store? He, he's right inside the store. Well, why in the world don't you get him to help you? Well, what do you think I want you to call him out here for? Now, hurry up, Grandpa. Yep. Yeah, Cedric will be a good one to help you, Abner. A good, strong boy. Yeah, oh, I need him. I need him. Yeah, Ollie Ziegler was pretty strong himself, but he was no match for that tent, I'll tell you that. At least he's not trying to put it up by himself. Grandpa, I ain't interested in what Ollie Ziegler done or that silly well, sister I don't here, blame Jackie, you. either one. There ain't much to the story. Holly had went out on a three-day camping trip, and he spent four days of it trying to set up the tent. Grandpa, will you please call Cedric before I drop dead here? Yeah, sure. Cedric! So finally they sent out a searching party for oh, Holly, and... Uh, I, I do, Miss Barton. There's Miss Barton and Edie across the street. Ain't you speaking to them, Abner? I ain't got enough strength to raise my voice out loud. I'm going to drop this whole thing now. Somebody don't help me Abner's here. putting up a tent, Edie. For the fortune teller, I reckon. Ain't that what it's for, Abner? Yeah, but listen, Grandpap, I can't hold this thing. Yeah, right. it's for the fortune teller. Oh, my goodness. You know, Abner, there's a nice woman at Miss Barton. And Edie, too, both friendly people. I know there, I know it, Grandpap, but if you don't do something pretty quick now, I'm going to pass out unconscientious. I'm plumb uh, give out You here. don't look so good, Abner. I'm worn out trying to hold this thing up here, Grandpap. If you want my old opinion, I think you ought, you ought to quit being so stubborn and let somebody else help you with that tent. I ain't being stubborn. Yes, you are, Abner. Now take the case of Ollie Ziegler, for incident. Uh, Grandpap. Uh, please don't tell that thing again. I've heard it one time. All I need is Cedric. Just get in there and tell him to come out here and bring that Abner. hammer and drive them stakes in for me. You ought to hear about Ollie, though. Oh, my goodness. It'll convince you I'm right. See, Ollie went out on a camping trip once. Three-day camping trip, and he spent four days... You of a done told me that, Grandpa. I did, huh? Why, sure. Now, go on and get Cedric for me or find them tent stakes and drive them in here for me or something. Now, I can't stand this thing much longer. Hurry up, Grandpa. Yeah, I notice you can't hardly talk. I'm so wore out I can't hardly stand here. I'm plumb give out of breath. Well, I'll help you, Abner. Uh, when did I tell you about Ollie? About two seconds ago. Well, I do know. Yes, sir, I must be getting a little forgetful. Oh, my. Wow. Sometimes a fella gets that away when he gets older. Hash up, Grandpap, and do something here. Yeah, I'll do something. You can't stand holding that pole up there much longer, Abner, I'll tell you that. You're telling me. Even a fella strong as Ollie Ziegler couldn't manage it by himself. Well, Grandpap, I ain't... In... Oh, wait a minute. I know that there comes Cedric at last. Hurry up, Cedric! Yeah, now, there's a boy you ought to get to help you, Abner. 
He'd do better than I would. He's stout. I wish you'd Cedric stop talking stout. for just a minute, Grandpap, and leave me alone. Cedric, hurry hey, up. Mr. Abner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Lum's talking on the telephone. I know he is, Cedric. Well, I'll have to wait till he gets done before I can ask where about the temp stakes are at. Huh? But I'll be out quick as I can. Now, wait a minute here. Cedric, come back here. Don't go back in that store now. Cedric! Cedric, Grandpap, go get Cedric. He went back something. in the store, Abner. I know he went back in there. Get him out here. Now, I tell you what, you go get the hammer from Cedric and you find them stakes. Long brought them out here. They're right around the tent here, so I wish I could turn around to look for them. That's a good but idea. Get I them stakes and drive them in here. here. Yes, sir. I don't want you to wind up like Ollie Ziegler does. I told you about him, didn't I? Yes, Grandpap. You told me about Ollie Ziegler. See, when the searching party got there, they found him all tangled up and wound up in the tent. And a batch of beavers was trying to dam up the creek with him. Oh, sad. They was. I ain't got time to listen to none of them tales either. It's the truth, Abner. Just ask Charlie Redfield. I don't want to ask nobody, Grandpap. All I want is somebody to pound them stakes in so as I can let go of this thing. Now, would you go in there and tell Cedric... Just a minute. Just a minute. I'll help you. Well, that's what I want you to do. Just hurry up, Grandpap. Whereabouts did you say the hammer was at? Cedric's got it in the store oh, now. yeah, that's right. I believe I'm getting sort of forgetful, Abner. Oh, my. I am. See, I ain't as young as you used to be. Oh, I ain't getting feeble or nothing like that, but sometimes things slip my mind. Grandpap, I... please hash up and go in the store and tell Cedric to come out here. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Lom. Thank goodness. Yeah, now, Lom can help you. Both him and Cedric can help you. Get both of them, too. Huh? Then you won't get like all these Ziggler. Did I tell you about all his yeah, things? Grandpap, yeah. yes, you told me. Lom, hurry up, Lom. Hey, Lom, come on out I'm here, hurry. Coming, Abner. I'm sorry for why taking so long, but... Well, I can't hold this thing much longer, Lom. Oh, do goodness, when that Uncle Henry Lunsford gets on the phone, he's the long-winded, this one human I know of. Please help Special me, Special of its town marshal business. Looks up rules and regulations and reads them over the telephone and I don't know what. Yeah, well, Lom, so just buy them stakes and for... drive them in this tent here so I can turn this thing loose. Tried to argue him out of it, but you just insisted we do it. Do what, Lom? Move the tent about three feet this way so the cars can get through. Huh? So just drop the pole, Abner. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I know the Lom. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John of Downstore. This is Lom and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, today was supposed to have been the day that the Pine Ridge War Savings Staff was to have presented a famous fortune teller to the citizens as a feature of its war bond campaign. However, something seems to have gone wrong with those plans. As we look in on the little community today, we find Squire Skimp in the Jump Down store trying to explain things to Co-Chairman Lum. But, Squire, you promised us faithful that the fortune teller would be here this afternoon. I know I did, Lum, and he would have been here today had it not been for a certain unforeseen event. Granny, look at that lineup of folks out there in front, all waiting to get their fortune stolen. Yes, yes, I saw them, Lum, yes. Most of them's already bought war bonds so they can get in to see them. Grandpappy Spears has been here since 6 o'clock this morning. Brung his lunch so he could be first in line. Yes, I know. I talked to him a while ago. Well, what am I going to tell all them folks? Well, Lom, if you'll just give me a chance to explain now, I ain't got enough nara to go and face them. Well, you don't need to feel that way, Lom. You advertise that Neo Show the Mystic will be here, and he will be. But one day late. Yeah, but one day late may be just one day too late. The folks are all going to get mad and want their money back. Now, you wait and see. Oh, I don't think so, Lom. They've got more than their money's worth already by just buying the bonds. And besides that, uh, this uh, uh, one delay in Sam the old soul's arrival will give him a better build-up, add more mystery and suspense to him. Yeah, I hope you're right. 
I've got my doubts, though. Now, if you mark my words, Lom, it'll make him just twice as popular as if he'd shown up today. Yeah, we'll see. So what did you say was causing his delay? Uh, well, it, it was one of those unfortunate things that could have happened to any of us, Lom. Uh, Sam got his four hot springs, and uh, while waiting in the depot there, he, uh, well, he borrowed a gentleman's watch and, uh, borrowed a watch. Yes, he uh, wanted to find out what time it was, you know. Uh, he was extremely anxious to get here on schedule. Well, why didn't he just look up on the wall? There's a big clock there, I think. No, uh, uh, well, uh, Sam's uh, rather nearsighted, Lama. In fact, often <coughs> nearsighted. He can't see a thing unless he holds it right up in front of his eyes. Mm. Sorry to hear that. Yes, it's quite a handicap. Poor old Sam. Never complains about it, old brave fella, stout fella, Sam. Yes. Yeah, but how would Barn a watch delay well, it uh, seems that when the gentleman handed Sam the watch, uh, his wallet somehow happened to slide out of his pocket, and, uh, well, it fell on the floor, I believe. And well, I still don't see why that was... Well, now, angels. wait just a minute, Lum. So then Sam, uh, being a polite and considerate man, naturally bent over and picked up the wallet to hand it back to the gentleman. And just then, now this is the unfortunate part, Lum, yeah. Uh, just as Sam had both the wallet and the watch in his hands, a uh, minion of the law, uh, what? uh, uh cop lum, policeman, oh. officer of the law, happened to notice him, and, uh, through an error of judgment, he mistook Sam for a pickpocket and arrested him. Well, I do not. He is indeed arrested him on purely false set of circumstances. But that's how matters now stand. And poor, unfortunate, ill-fated Sam is now incarcerated. He's in where? I thought you said he was in Hot Springs. Well, he is, Lum. Uh, that's where he's incarcerated. Ah. Uh, he's behind the bars, Lum. He's in jail, a man. Oh, in jail. I see. That's what I thought you meant. Oh, yes. It must be a miserable experience for a delicate, sensitive person like Sam, too. Well, how long is he going to be in jail? Well, that depends upon you, Lum. On me? Yes, $15 will bail him out, and he can easily get here by tomorrow. $15. Yes, uh, you can wire to him, Lum. Well, just a minute, Squire. Uh, what's that? Now, we done sent him a bunch of money to pay his hotel bill and some more for his train fare here. Yes. We can't keep sending him money all the time, you know. Well, you want to sell war bonds, don't you, Lum? Why, sure, of course we do. we got to do that. Well, then I think that you'll find this $15 a worthwhile investment. I reckon that's about all we can do. Oh, yes, Lum. After all them handbills we got out and put up the tent and all. Yes, it's the thing to do, Lum. There's no doubt about that. All right, looks like we're stuck. Now, if you want to, why, you can give me the money and I'll send it to Sam and save you all that bother. Yeah. All right. Be glad to do it. I hope we got that much left in the cash drawer. Sam's running into quite an expense item, I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, it's just one of those unfortunate things, Lom. Could happen to anyone, anyone. You mind taking part of it in small game? My no, it's perfectly all right, Lom. Anything to help the call, be glad to do anything I can. Yeah, just about got this much. Let's see. There you are. Fifteen dollars. Yes, uh, uh, you better throw in uh, an extra 75 cents there, too, Lum, to cover the cost of the uh, telegraph, you know. Um, you think there's no end to this? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lum. Hey, Lum. Lum, you better go out there and tell them folks out there getting mad because that fortune telling feller ain't showed up yet. Yeah, I fear to that. And I've run out of all the excuses I can think up, Lum. Well, I don't know exactly what to tell him myself. Why, there's only one thing to tell him, Lum. Just tell him that he'll be here tomorrow for sure, right on the dot. Well, that's what we told him yesterday. I don't know whether they'll believe us this time or not. Well, it's up to you to convince them, Lum. You can do it. Just uh, tell him that there's merely been a slight delay. And uh, tell him that Sam was... Uh, well, you say that he was uh, held over in hot springs by popular demand. Popular demand? Yes, yes, Lum. What does that mean? Well, uh, he's being held over there. There's no doubt about that. I tell you, you can tell him that uh, he has to complete a big bond deal there before he can leave. Big bond deal? Yes. Uh, however, it won't be necessary for you to mention that it's a uh, bail bond, Lum. Oh, yeah. Well, I reckon we could tell him that. Well, of course you can. I hate to tell him any stories, though. Alarm, you won't be prevaricating. All you'll be doing is just omitting a small four-letter word. 
male, B-I-I-L, that's all you'll be admitting. And this is all for where they call from. The cause for victory and freedom. Now what better motive is there in the whole world today that you could tell one little uh, uh, word like that for? You're, you're right about that. Abner, will you go out and tell them that? Yeah, sure. I reckon so if I can think of it. I wasn't listening very good, I don't think. Tell him again, Squire. Well, I say, uh, Abner, just tell them that uh, Sam will be here tomorrow, that uh, he's been, uh, been held over in Hot Springs by popular demand uh, to finish up a little bond deal there. I hope you don't get as mixed up telling the Squire while it's mixed up telling you. I, I believe I can recollect it. Yeah. I'll just tell them that. Tell them the fortune teller will be here for sure tomorrow. Make yeah. them believe it now. Yeah, I this will. campaign's got to be a success. That's all they are to it. Well, it will be, Lum. I'll give you my word that he'll be here. Don't worry about that for a minute. Well, I hope so. Now, go on out and make a public announcement, Abner. Well, all right. I'll do the best I can. Good. Sometimes I hope we don't fail on this time. If the folks start losing confidence in us, we never will be able to sell no war bonds. Well, you won't fail them, Lum. I gave you my word, didn't I? Yeah, I know, I... Like to be sure, though. Well, um, you know my word is as good as my bond. Always has been. But this is awful import. Wait a minute. I believe you just give me an idea there, Squire. You say your word's as good as your bond. Huh? Always has been and always will be, Lum. A skimp has never been known to go back on his word. Well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take you at your word then and have you put up a bond. Uh, uh, what, what was that? Mom? Here's the deal. You can take that $15 and send it to your friend on one condition. Yeah, what's that? Well, if he don't show up, you buy me and Abner a $100 war bond. A $100? Well, uh, not a war bond. And, and if he does show up, you, uh, we'll buy you a $100 war bond. That's fair enough, ain't it? Well, yes, Lum, but uh, there's a slight possibility. Uh, you now, said that... he'd be here for sure, didn't you? Well, yes. So but... that ought to be a cinch bet for you, ought Yes, of course, but uh, you see, Lama, there's a slight possibility that Sam might not be able to make it, you know. The, uh, well, the crowded, uncertain conditions of train travel and all that these days, you know. Well, that's the deal. I'll take it or leave it. Mm, all right, I hate to see you lose, Lama. And just to show you I'm a good sport, I'll give you a chance to back out right no, now. No, I don't want to back out. Mm. If I lose it, it'll be worth it. We gotta keep faith with all them folks out there. Well, all right, Mom. Well, I guess I better get over and wire that money to Sam. I'll see you tomorrow when Sam gets here then. Yeah, right. that'll be fine, Squire. So long. Yeah, so long. Hey, you leaving far? Yes, yes, I'll see you later, Abner. Uh huh. <coughs> Did you convince them, Abner? I don't know. I done the best I could, Lum. Grandpappy Spears is awful man. I, I convinced Cedric. I know that though. Yeah. Well, Cedric believe my not anything we say. Yeah, he's out there arguing with everybody that still doubts about that fortune telling fellow ever showing up. He tells them that he'll be here. Cedric's a good boy. Y you sure enough think that fellow will show up, Lum? Well, if you don't, our friend Mr. Skimp's going to have to loosen up and buy a war bond. I'll state that. Buy a war bond? Yeah, I bet him a hundred dollar bond that the fellow wouldn't get here tomorrow. Or that is, we bet. We? Yeah. Well, I don't. If he does get here, we'll lose old Well, that's all right. I'd decide rather that money go to the government and let Square keep stalling us and get it out of us for Sam's hotel bills and bail and all that. Yeah, that's right, I reckon. I never thought about it just that way. Yeah, I think we got old Squire coming or going this time. Well, good for us. <laughs> I'd love to get the best of him one yeah, time. <laughs> thinking on my part, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. Uh, oh, uh, what is it, Sandy? Well, I just put over a good one. You did? Yes, my old Squire. Squire? <laughs> See, when that fortune teller gets here tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to go to make myself some money, I think. <laughs> Boy. Make some money? Yes, well, Mr. Squire just bet me a $100 war bond that he won't show up. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I know his lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Uh, 
You know? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the famous fortune teller and mystic, who was to be a big feature of the Pine Ridge war savings campaign, failed to show up yesterday as promised. So co-chairman Edwards and Peabody announced that they would arrive, or rather he would arrive today without fail. However, today arrived, but no mystic. And so as we're looking on the little community now, we find Lum and Abner in the Jotham Down store taking steps to keep their promise to the townsfolk. Oh, Lum, I feel downright silly with this. Come on, Lum. I can't help it, Abner. you got to go through with this. That's all they are to it. You huh? do look a little silly, yeah. Well, of course, I do run around in a woman's dress. That's the worst thing I ever hear, dog. And in the second place, I don't know nothing about telling fortunes, Long. Well, just make up a batch of stuff. Make it up. Why, sure, the folks will never know the difference. Besides, you got that book, ain't you? Fuck book. That we got in the library. Junior boys and girls, handy fortune telling and parlor stunt manual, forever okay. Oh, yeah, I got that. Some good eyes in there. Yeah. Tells you all you need to know. Stand still so as I can get this ramp back on your eyebrows, sit all over your forehead. Well, now, do you have to smear that stuff on me? Well, it'll come out all right. Might take a little extra work to get it out of your beard, but you can get it off some way. Stand still, Ab. I'm standing still. Well, don't wiggle your head. I don't get wait a minute long. Just stop right where you're at. What's the matter? I can't go through it. Well, you've got to. No, sir, I can't do it. We promised all them folks out there that we'd have a fortune teller for them today, and I, grannies, we ain't going to go back on our word. But I ain't no fortune teller long. Well, you can learn. You can tell them stuff. Make up a bunch of junk. Well, I don't know nothing about making up junk. I don't know what to start out to tell them. Well, you know most of them. Tell them what they've been doing all their lives. What they've been doing. Yeah, and then make up a bunch of stuff what they're going to do in the future. Mm-hmm. Easy. I don't know whether... You want a war bond campaign to be a success, don't you? Why, sure. All but... right, then. Here, off this towel around your head. Ah. Uh, That's what you wear for a hat. A hat? All fortune tellers wear them. They're called turbines. Uh, well, maybe if we waited one more day, that Sam the Oso the Mystic might show up on No, no, I've done giving him up. I don't think he ever aimed to get here in the first place. Squire was just using him to get money out of me and you, I think. Well, Squire bet you a hundred dollar war bond that the fella'd show up. Yeah, but I forced him into that bet. Huh? Then he turned right around and bet Cedric that the fella wouldn't show up. You weren't taking no chances on being out no money. What, did you talk to Squire today? Yeah, he had some other fancy excuse why Sam the Osho would be delayed again. He did, huh? Yeah, said he fell out of the patrol wagon or something like that and was taken to the hospital. Hmm. So Squire wanted us to send some more money for that, but I told him nothing to it. Well, I believe that was a mistake. No, it weren't. I just put my foot right down. Refused. Well, we ought to have him here, though. We done told people he'd be here. Here, let me fix that towel. Ain't supposed to go around your throat. Goes around the top of your head. Well, I don't believe I got the right shaped head for one of them turbine things. Yes, you have. There, that looks better now. Mom, now you know good and well this ain't gonna fool nobody. They'll know me the minute they see me. No, they won't. Over in the part of the tent where you'll be, it's so dark, nobody can see nothing hard. They can't, huh? The only light in there is that little bitty light that I rigged up underneath that glass bowl. Glass bowl? Yeah. Am I gonna eat in there? No, the bowl's empty. Ah. Uh-huh. See, it's a uh, it's upside down, so it'll look like a crystal ball. You look in it to see stuff. Make out like you see it. Well, how am I going to see anything if it's empty? Well, just make out like you see stuff. All that junk about the future. Oh, uh, that's well, where you get it. Make make them think I see that in there. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Uh, so you're supposed to be the only one can see it. Uh, the other fellow's sitting there looking at it, but he can't see nothing. Well, I hope not, because I know I ain't going to see nothing when I look in it if it's empty. Uh, I think you're all set now, ain't you? I don't know whether I am or not, Mom. <laughs> you look a sight in that outfit. Ah. Uh, <laughs> in that Mother Hubbard. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, Come on, whatever it is. Well, Mom, if it's going to be dark in that tent, how am I going to read anything out of that fortune-telling book? Well, hold the book on your lap and use that little flashlight I give you. Oh. Uh, Come on now. You slip out the back door. Well, wait, wait a minute, Lum. Wait a minute now. This sort of talk gets over. Them folks are going to know my voice when they hear me, Lum. Well, not if you disguise it, they won't. Disguise it? Yeah, it talks sort of like a foreigner. Huh? Talk slow, too. Might make out like you're a country jake. Can you talk backwards? 
Well, I don't know where I've lived here in town so long now. I doubt if I could, Mom. Well, try to do when I was young and I lived out in the country. No, try to talk back with you. Let's hear you say something. Well, I wouldn't know what to say. Hardly. Well, can you talk like an Italian? A what? Can you talk like a Chinese man? No, Lom, I can't talk like nobody but me. Uh, well, talk slow, then. Keep your voice on a monoplane. Keep it on a what? Keep it on one level. Don't let it go upwards and downwards, you know. Well, I'll try it. I don't know what you're talking about. Go out the back door and then crawl underneath the tent. Underneath the tent? Yeah, around to the back side of it there. Nobody will see you that way. Well, all right. This is going to get both of us in trouble. Hurry up now. We can't right keep now. the folks waiting another half a second. There's a bigger line out there now than there was yesterday. I know what I've seen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, if we don't give them a fortune teller today, they'll mob us and tar and feathers, and I don't know what all. Go on. Get going. I'm going. I'm trying to hold up this dress so I can walk. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go out the front way and start sending the customers in to you. Well, I just hope it works. That's all I hope. Huh? He hopes it works. Yeah. All we can do is try, I reckon. <laughs> Yeah, howdy, everybody. Proud to see so many of you here today. Howdy, Esme. Ms. Barton. How are you, Ulysses? Uh, okay, Mom. Uh, i got good news for you folks today. Okay. Neil, show the magician, or whatever you call him, the mystic, is here, and he's inside his tent already to start telling fortune. So if all of you that's done uh, bought war bonds will get in line, well, I'll see that you're, you get in there just as quick as we can get to uh, well, I'm at the head of the line here myself, Mom. Well, good for you, Grandpa. Been here since 5.30 this morning. That pigeon-toed fortune teller's a fake. I'll all sue you and everything else. Well, don't worry, Grandpa. He ain't a fake, I don't think. Well, I see you done got your bonds already, so just follow me inside the tent, Grandpa. Yeah, let's go inside that pigeon-toed tent. I can't wait to have my fortune told. Uh, are you all set in the old show? Uh-huh. Good. All right, Grandpa, just go in behind that curtain there and sit down in the chair. Yeah, all right. Better not be no fake, though, I'll tell you that. Oh, that blame it. It's so dark here. I can't see a pigeon toed thing. Where am I at? Uh, yeah, sit down, Grant. Er, uh, uh, please sit down, mister. Yeah, all right. Ought to have some light in here, fella. Yeah, or two. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me something about myself, Mr. Neo Show. Well, uh, it's the, uh, your name is, uh, Milford Spears, and your woman's name is Charity, and, uh, oh, you got a birthmark on your left elbow, and, uh, I do know. You, you got a red muffler that you're wearing in the winter, and, uh, uh, you love to read the almanac. Well, for the long you say, that's right. All right, Jimmy, you're all right. Yes, sir. Yeah, how you fellas know all that stuff? Oh, we got uh, magic powers, I think. That's yes, right, I wish I had that. It's a lot of fun. I've read a little about this subject, but I never got on to the magic part about it. Hmm. Well, go on, tell me some more, Mr. Neil Show. Well, uh, let's see, uh, oh, you got a scar where you had your appendicitis cut out one time. And, say, you know, you sound sort of like a fella here in town, Abner Peabody. I do, huh? Oh, uh. You have got a scar where you had your appendix cut out. Now, do I? No, yeah, not so much. Good. And, uh, you play checkers a lot, and you cheat a little. What's that? I predict that if you don't stop cheating so much, you will get a good whop on top of the head. Now, listen here, I don't cheat. Yes, I'll tell you, you do. Right I now. got magic cars. I can tell them things. Well, in that case, I may as well own up, I reckon. Might as well. I, I have what. done a little extra moving around of the checkers. Not much, though. Mostly by accident. Last Monday, when you beat Abner Peabody three games hand-running, you cheated, didn't you, Mr. Spears? Well, uh, come to think about it, I believe my hand did slip once. That's right. Never done it on a purpose, though. Uh-huh. Probably. And when you beat him two games last Friday, you cheated then, too, didn't you? Well, uh... Are you sure you got magic powers? Yes, sir, I know it. Well, the board did get jolted a little. Yeah. Moved a few of the checkers around in my favor. That's just about what I figured while he was up answering the telephone. Now, listen here. Morning. You ain't going to tell this to Abner Peabody, are you? I don't know. Us mystic sees all, knows all, and tells all. 
And I'm uh, talking as one mystic I ever know. Well, now, listen, Mr. Neosho. If you tell him that, there'll be no living in this town with him. I'll have to move out. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you can't do it, I tell you. Well, us mystics has to tell stuff. That's our business. Well, worse now, uh, I might be able to forget some things if you promise never to cheat again when you're playing oh, with that Oh, I promise. Fella. I promise. promise anything. And, uh... You better buy a $25 war bond, too. Huh? Better make that two bonds. I got an awful good memory. Hard for me to forget that. Oh, all right, all right. I'll buy them, I'll buy them. Let's say three bonds. Just to make sure that I'll keep my big mouth shut. All right, three. I'll do anything to keep from letting that varmint find out about this. He ain't no varmint. Why, he is good. The uh, only reason I ever cheated was to keep up with him. There's a cheatness one checker player. He ain't no cheater. He, he ain't doing it. He is he's 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 too. He's the worst not. you ever run against. Grandpap, I never cheated you one single time, and you know Oh, it. no, how about the time you... Er, wait a minute here. Ah, uh, uh, Jiminy, I thought I recognized your voice. Why, you little underhanded varmint, you pigeon-toed not... Now, now, wait a minute, now, listen, Grandpa. I'm listen. going out and tell everybody what I think. Now, wait a minute, come back here. I'm going to do it. That's what I'm going to do. You, you can't do that. You'll ruin our whole campaign for no, selling no, war bonds. I'll tell every last... That's no. unpatriotic. You ain't going to do that. You know, I might be able to keep still if you say you bought a uh, $25 war bond. Me, but... Oh... All right, I'll buy it. Uh, better make that three of them, Abner. Ah, uh, I'm the talkingest one human you ever run up again in your whole life. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know this Lama, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lama and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, when the Osho the Mystic failed to show up, Abner was forced to don tunic and turban and take up the role of fortune teller in order to carry on the big bond campaign being sponsored by the Pine Ridge War Saving Staff. The first customer, Grandpappy Spears, recognized Abner, but from there on, Abner was more cautious and became a fairly successful soothsayer. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library putting on his costume. Grandpappy Spears is at the library table with his favorite book, The Almanac. Listen. Well, for the land's sakes. What's the matter, Grandpap? Well, yes, sir, what do you know about that? Well, what is it? Yes, sir, I'll be dogged. Listen to this, Abner. Three million two hundred and sixty-five thousand a hundred and forty-four dollars worth of sausage casings was produced in Illinois in 1939. Ah, oh. it's the truth, Abner, according to the almanac. I never said it was. Over three million dollars worth of sausage casings. Ah, uh-huh. that was in Illinois, 1939. Yeah. Yes, sir, that's a lot of sausage casings, Abner. How big a pile do you reckon that makes? Grandpap, don't bother me. Can't you see I'm trying to get this fortune-telling outfit on? Oh, excuse me. Yes, sir, that's a lot of sausage pieces. You want to know how, how many they put out in our state? No, I don't. Now, yeah, look it up for you. Let's see here. Arkansas, Arkansas. I said I never want to know. No, I don't tell that, Abner. It just gives it for Illinois. Uh-huh. I can give you them figures, though. Three million two hundred and sixty-five. I ain't interested in that stuff. Come over here and help me tie this towel around my head if you want to do something. Huh? Oh, putting on your fortune telling outfit, huh? Why, sure. I told you that a thousand or a hundred times. <laughs> you sure look a sight in that get up, Abner. Well, just stop laughing and help me tie this turban on here. Er, uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe I got it now. That's the outdoing this thing I ever seen in my life. I don't like to get personal, Abner, but whose kimono is that? How? Huh. Elizabeth's. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you never fool me none in that costume. You never, sure enough. I, I know just as soon as I sat down that tent out there the other day that it was you. 
No, I had first, you know. Yes, I did. You, you never never done no such a thing. I was just letting on. No, I sir. Never. Not till I give myself away, you never knowed who it was. And since then, I've learned myself how to disguise my voice better. I got everybody fooled now. <laughs> I doubt it. Well, it's a truth. Every day, there's a big lineup buying war bonds so they can have me tell their fortune. But just look out there right now at that lineup out there waiting for me. Just curiosity seekers, that's all. No, they ain't no such a thing. They think I'm a real genuine imitation fortune teller. They're going to catch on to you and run you clean out of town. You mind what I tell you. They won't do no such a thing. I'm doing awful good at this now, Grandpa. Facts is, just to be honest, I might be a natural-born mystic for all I know. Sassy Fred. Well, I might. You don't know about it. Sassy Fred. You ain't got magic powers, and you know it. Well, the folks think I have anyway. All I need is just tell them some of the stuff that's happened to them in the last 50 years, which I know I've lived here so long. Naturally. And then they think I must be magic, or I wouldn't know that about them. And from then on, I still believe anything I say to them. You believe I never believe none of it. At first you did. But wait a minute, wait a minute, there it comes Long. Uh, you all set, Abner? Yeah, yeah, how'd I look, Long? Well, uh, let's see. Well, it don't matter. It's dark inside the tent. Granny, you're sure going over big, Abner. I've got to hand it to you. Well, good for me. You're doing good. I am, huh? Yeah, I sold the biggest batch of war bonds today of any day yet. You did? Yeah. Some of the folks are even coming back to have their fortune sold a second time. Well, who right? Oh, you're doing <laughs> awful good, Abner. Oh, well, ain't nothing to it, Mom. I know my, my everything there is to know about everybody in town here. And then when I get to predicting the future for them, why... Well, I know whatever one of them wants to have happen to them, so I just tell them that like you told me to do. <laughs> well, that's the right idea. Oh, they're tickled to death. Just tell folks what they want to hear, and they think you're the smartest fellow to ever live. <laughs> hey, Ron. Oh, what is it, Grandpa? Guess how many sausage casings was made in Illinois in 1939? Oh, my. I ain't got the least idea, Grandpa. Besides, I ain't got time to guess. No, no, I'll, I'll look it up for you, Ron, if I can find the place again. Yeah, do that, Grandpa. I'd just love to know him. Just don't, dying to know him. Don't encourage him, Long. I just judge him. Yeah, well, come on, Abner. You better slip out the back way and sneak into the tent. Yeah, yeah, so, so. I told him the old show the mystic was about ready, so you better get out there. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I am. Well, for the land sakes, is that uh, old Ulysses S. Quincy? Is he lined up right again today? Oh, yeah. He's alive out here. <laughs> I never figured we'd get him to loosen up for some war bonds in the first place, much less the second time. Me neither, me neither. What in the world did you predict for him for the future? Oh, that was easy. I just predicted he'd get his barn painted. He'd oh. be trying to find a painter for that. No time. wonder he's willing to buy more bonds. More than likely, he's come back today to find out who's going to do the painting. <laughs> Wait a minute, I believe that was our ring there, wasn't it? Yeah, it might have been. You get it. Me? Yeah. Well, I've got on this fortune teller. Oh, well, don't talk in your fortune teller, huh, boy. They can't see me. Hey, Abner, yeah, here's something that already interests yeah, you be right quiet here. Me, Pap. Uh, hello, John, them down to the store library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Oh, well, howdy, Miss Abernathy. This will interest you as long as you're wearing one of them. Uh, what's there. that, Miss Abernathy? The hydraulic turbine was invented in 1849. Uh, Pap, please be quiet. Uh, come over there again. I never quite understood you. That ain't a turbine he's wearing, Grandpa. That's a turban. Oh, why, sure. Yeah, Miss Abernathy. Proud to have you. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> yes, Mom. All right. Goodbye. In 1849, it was invented, Abner. Huh? What'd the widow want, Abner? Oh, uh, she just wanted to know if she could come back for another fortune telling. 1849, I said. Said she'd buy a $100 bond this time to get her fortune told. A yeah. hundred dollars. Yeah, that's what you said. Granny, <laughs> you must have predicted something awfully interesting for her. Well, I just told her what I knowed she's dying to hear. I predicted that a man would prepose to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was the right thing to predict for her. Oh, right. tickle her to death. Yeah, well. She's been trying to get married as long as I've known her. Yeah. Her and Sister Simpson both. Oh, both of them, yeah. Well, I reckon you better get out there in the tent now before the folks get far yeah, away. Mom, I believe that was our ring again. Uh, I never paid no attention. Oh, I'll get it this Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Hello, jot them down, store and library. Well, I'm at her doing the talking. Oh, yes, Miss Abernathy. Hmm. Huh. Yes, she is, ma'am. Yeah. Supper. Uh-oh. Well, uh, that is, I, I'm feared I can't make it tonight with her. Uh, I was scared. Yeah, I got something important to do. 
I better get out of here. I'll leave well, you. I think, uh, well, I can't, I can't recollect what it is right now, but tomorrow night. Well, I'll have to let you know. Yes, Ma. Well, much obliged anyway. Awful thought of you every day. Yeah, goodbye. Uh, I, I believe I'll get started long. Uh, that's excuse you why the widow would all of a sudden want me to take supper over her place. Uh, I'll see you later, Long. Yeah, all right. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come back here a minute, Abner. Ah. Uh, Just exactly what all did you predict for the widow's future? Oh, why, uh, well, nothing much. I, uh, well, I just told her some fella would pre-post her. That's about all, uh, Did you say any particular fella? Mm, no, uh, just a fella. Are you sure you didn't mention my name? No, sir, I never said your name. Honest, I never crossed my heart long. Well, did you tell her what sort of a looking fella it would be? Uh, well, not exactly, I don't think. Not exactly. What did you say about it? Well, I, uh, well, I just said he was tall, and uh, there's a lot of tall fellas, you know, long. I know that. What else did you say? Well, that's just about all I said. I Are you sure? Well, I, I might have mentioned something about him having a mustache. I'm going. And uh, I, I, I might have said he had wavy gray hair, too, I believe. Maybe. Yeah. And what else? Well, Lom, I can't recollect everything I said. That was way back yesterday. I ain't no memories expert. Well, you better recollect this if you know what's good for you. Well, I want to know what you told her. My, my mind's a blank now. I believe I got the emanation. No, you ain't got no such a thing. I suppose you told her this fellow's initials was L.E. I never done no such a thing. All I said was that his first name uh, started with an L. That's all I said. I, I never mentioned the letter E not one time. Cross my heart. Now, that don't beat the bugs of fighting. My own partner are doing a thing like that. Now, wait a minute. Now, Lon, I don't look. I ought to whop you right on top of that. Now, Lon, I was just trying to be patriotic and sell war bonds. You, you don't want us to lose a war, do you? Well, man, the Widow Abernathy is the one thing I can think of. It'd be worse than losing a war. Huh? It'd be like starting another. Huh? Come here, Abner. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Now, listen, Lon. Come I, here. I, I, Lon, I was just doing what you told me to do. Now, you said pick out the one thing that my customers want to have happen to them more than anything else in the world and predict that for them. I know That's that. That's your exact words, Lon. I heard you say that with my own ears. Yeah, but that was going just a little bit too far. Huh? And as I wish you was taller so as I could knock you back down to the size you are now. Yeah, well, now, wait a minute now, Lon. Now, 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 this ain't going to get you into no trouble with the weather. Oh, no. No trouble at all. Of course not. Just going to ruin my whole life, that's it all. It ain't going to do no such a thing, Lum. I, I, I was afraid you might feel this way about it, so I, I'll take steps to protect you. Protect? Yes, sir. From the widow, you mean? Why, sure. You won't get in no trouble at all, Lum. Oh, well, I'm <laughs> sorry I jumped on you, Abner. Hard to know you'd look after me. Why, sure. You know old Abner. He wouldn't go back on you, Lum. A no. true friend. That's what I am. Well, that's fine. Yes, I'm sir. sorry I said what I did. Well, that's all right. Just forget it. Just skip it. <laughs> you, you're taking care of everything. Yeah, yeah. This don't bring up a subject again. Well, exactly what was it you done to protect me? Well, uh... But you, you know all the stuff that I told the winner? Yeah. Well, I told the same thing to Sister Simpson. Oh, my Granny's, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know, good Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lom and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Abner's fortune-telling act sold a lot of war bonds for the Pine Ridge War Saving Staff, but it also got Lum into a good deal of trouble. In telling the fortunes of Sister Simpson and the widow Abernathy, Abner predicted that they would both receive proposals of marriage from a man not unlike Lum Edwards. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot em down store and library trying to cope with this new state of affairs. 
Yeah, you know, all right, Long. You can come on out from your hiding place now. The, the winter ain't coming in the store after all. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. Oh, she's going in Dick Huddleston's store over there. <laughs> and if this ain't a fine predicament for a giver man executive like me to be in. Uh, having to hide right in my own store every time I see the Witter Abernathy or her Sister Simpson coming down the street. Well, I don't see what you have to hide for long. You ain't actually pre-posed to neither one of them. No, but I'm just as bad off as if I had a pre -pose. Worse even, I believe. Worse? Why, sure. The way it is now, both of them think I'm in love with them and just ain't got enough nerve to pre -pose. Oh. So they're both doing all they can to encourage me to do it. Well, why don't you tell them that they just got their own ID? Well, how can you tell them two women anything? They never let you get a half a word in edgeways, or no other way. Well, just write them a postcard and explain it to them that way, then. No, that wouldn't do no good. You and your fine mystic predictions. Huh? You're the one that put the idea in their heads that a tall man with a mustache and name that begins with an L is going to pre-post them. Oh. Uh -huh. Now, you couldn't get the idea out of them with a stick of dynamite. Well, we could try dynamite and see one. I mean, I don't know why I ever let you be Neosho, the fortune teller, in the first place. There's the biggest one mistake I ever made. I was just doing it to be patriotic, that's all. Yeah, but there's other ways of being patriotic besides getting your best friend into a situation like this. I'm a good mind to unsolve partnerships right here and now. Well, now, Lon, you got to admit I made a success out of myself being that fortune teller. We sold an awful lot of bonds that way. Yeah, I know. And that's what the giver meant pinted us to do, ain't it? Well, yeah, but right there is something that's bothered me. Huh? Here I am, the head co-chairman of the Pine Ridge War Saving Staff, and what am I doing? Sneaking around like some fugitive from justice, like an archid criminal. Well, you don't need to sneak around. I don't. No, sir, you don't. Abner, have you ever had either Sister Simpson or the widder make sheep eyes at you? Well, no. Have you ever had them giggle at you? Ah, uh, no, no giggle. Well, till you went through that, you just ain't suffered. Suffered? Yes, sir. Out and out, undiluted, downright, whole hog suffering. Ah. Uh. There's the one thing that'd make a man suicide himself and be glad he done it. Oh, now, Lum, you're exaggerating that, and you know it. I ain't no such a thing. And I'm just talking about having one of them two women after you. And here, I got both of them on my trail at one time. Well, you know, Lum, I never meant to get you into all this trouble. I was just trying to be patriotic. What if Mr. Morgan thought I'd drop in here to see how I'm running the war saving staff? Just think about that. Huh? What would I do if he come all the way out here from Washington and find me with two women on my hands? What would I do? Well, I reckon you'd try to get him to take one of them and you'd take the other. Abner, don't say that. Huh? Did I say something that wasn't nice? Well, you said something that might be considered treason again the country. Treason? That's what you done. Uh -huh. To do a thing like that to one of our high government officials would be giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Oh, my goodness. Will they arrest me, Long? I don't know. That ain't a bad idea, though. Right now, Long, don't you say that now. All right. I don't look so scared. Well, I ain't scared much. I just recollected, though, that I'm a co-chairman of the War Saving Staff, too, and it wouldn't look very good for me to be in jail, Long. Yeah, maybe they appointed the wrong two fellers for this job. Uh -uh, I believe that was our ring there. Yeah, I know. I know who it is, too. Uh, the widder calling up about supper tonight. Oh, yeah, that's right. You said you'd let her know if you could make it. Yeah, you answered and study up some reason why I can't make it, Abner. Well, Mom, I don't know what to study up. Oh, well, and you was the one that got me into this. Oh, now, it's up to you to get me out. Go on. Oh, all right. Don't know what I'm going to say to her, though. Hello, John. I'm down the store in the library doing the talking. I mean, Abner Peabody talking. Mom? Oh, yeah, he's here. Just a second. Here, and I'm a speed. Don't hand me that receiver. I ain't talking to the widder. It ain't the widder. Oh, it's, it's different. Give me the receiver. Yeah, yeah. Who is it? Sister Samson. Sister, uh, here, here. Huh? Get back on the phone. You know I don't want to talk to her neither. Well, you never mentioned her. You just said the widder. Oh, get back on the phone. I done told her you was here, Long. Tell her you mistaken me for somebody else. Tell her I went somewhere. Go on now. Dad, tell me. Uh, hello, Miss Simpson. Uh, I reckon I must have made a mistake. Mom ain't here after all, I don't think. No, Mom, he ain't. He said so himself just now. Oh, my goodness. I already did this myself. Hey, uh, just a minute. She says, how could you tell me that right now if you ain't here, Mom? Uh, tell her, tell her I telephoned it to you. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Simpson. He telephoned it to me. Mom? Oh, just a minute. 
He says, how could you do that when me and her are talking on the phone ourselves? Well, Is this right, Annie? Yeah, she's right Let's about see. that. Tell her I sent you a telegraph. Oh. Uh, hello? Uh, he sent me a telegraph. Yes, Mom. Oh, I, uh, he sent it from, uh, well, wherever he's at, I reckon. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, just a minute. She says for me to look on a telegraph and see where it come from. Oh, oh. tell her St. Louis. Or, or no, make it Summers further away. Uh, Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. That's uh, Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin, he says. Or, I mean, it says. Mom? Uh-huh. Oh, well, uh, yes, Mom, uh, well, it was just a second. Uh, she says, what would you send a telegraph from Wisconsin saying you ain't here in Pine Ridge for a long time? She said, if you was that far away, I'd already know what you wasn't here, so there wouldn't be no sense in you send a telegram. My goodness, there's the most vicious one woman in the whole world. Mom? Don't believe nothing. Uh, she says you're a heap too smart a fella to do a thing like that, Mom. No, me. Well, what do you want me to tell her? To tell her I'm just plain ignorant. Oh. Uh, that's why I sent it. Oh. Uh, hello, Miss Simpson. Uh, he's just plain ignorant. That's the reason he sent it. Mom? Oh, well, here now, wait a minute. What? Yes, Mom, but... Uh, well... Well, now we did it, I reckon, Mom. What's the matter? Why, she's mad at me for insulting me. She says I can't talk that away about her future husband. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she's still rattling here. What you want me to do, Ron? Well, ain't nothing we can do now. She'll be on that phone talking a blue streak at you for the rest of the day. Oh, she's just a bomb me. Maybe, maybe you better talk her to her yourself here. I don't yeah, know what to say to her. maybe I are too. Here, take this thing. Let her go. Since you ain't going to get things straightened out for me. Let well, me I just it. said to her what you told me to say. That's all I know. Hello, Miss Simpson. This is Mom. Yeah, I'm here. Abner just joshing you, huh? I was here all the time. <laughs> What's that? Well, uh... Granny's, I'd love to, Miss Simpson, but, uh... Well, I, I got a previous engagement for supper, I think. Well, uh, with the... Oh, I know, with the winter Abernathy. That's right. Yeah, I'm awful sorry for Miss Simpson. Yeah, maybe some other time. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Mom, I thought you said you'd rather suicide yourself and go over to the Witter Abernathy's place. I ain't going over to the Witter's place. You just said you I, was. I did just come to me while I was on the phone there. Uh -huh. I wonder if the Witter's home by this time. Well, she ought to be. I seen her leave Dick Huddleston's door there some time ago. Yeah. Oh, what's her ring, do you know? Uh, uh, wait, I believe it's wrote down here something. Yeah, here it is. Well, Mom, you ain't sure not going to call her, are you? Sure. Oh, you ain't in your right mind. I, I better get Doc Miller for you, Lama. Oh, no, I'm all right. I know what I'm doing. Uh -huh. This is the best one idea I ever had. Uh, hello, Miss Abernathy. Uh -huh. This is Lom. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I'm sorrowful, but I won't be able to come to your place for supper tonight. Huh. No, you see, I'm taking supper with Sister Simpson. Sister Simpson? Yeah, well, this was a previous engagement I forgot about. Oh. Yeah, maybe some other time. All right. Goodbye. All right, doggies, I get it now. Love, you're a genius. You know what? A genius. Oh, no, I ain't. A, just about as smart as one. Well, all. you can keep putting both of them off that way for days and weeks at a time. Then they'll both get so mad at me, neither one of them won't have a thing to do <laughs> with me. <laughs> they'll hate and despise you. Oh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I don't know why I never thought of this before, bright as I am. Why, I'm. sure, a genius like you ought to study that up in no time at all. Yeah, now I can get back to being a giverman executive, acting like one, do. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Morgan Falk can drop in here now, and he'd find everything running smooth and under control. Why, sure, sure. Fact is, I wish he would drop in. There's a couple of things about our bond campaign I'd like to discuss. I, I, I believe that was our ring again, Mom. Yeah, you get it. Got a lot of executive desk work to do here. Uh -huh. Tell whoever it is I'm busy at. Yeah. Busy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Hello, John down store and library. Having a Peabody doing the talking. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, well, he's busy. Why, sure, I'll take a message. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, all right. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell him, Miss Simpson. All right. Goodbye. Miss Simpson? Yeah. Well, what'd she want this time? Why, she said she'd just talked to the Witter Abernathy, and they figured you must be mixed up about supper tonight, Lum, so they got it all settled for you. All settled? Yeah, and they're being patriotics, too. 
What are you talking about? Why, see, they're saving on food by dining together on a meal tonight, and that a way why you can take supper with both of them. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I know, Islam. I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, ever since Abner, posing as a fortune teller, predicted to Sister Simpson and Widow Abernathy that a man, probably Lum, would propose to them, each one of those worthy women has been doing her best to draw forth this proposal from the bashful Lum. At any rate, they think that it's only his bashfulness that's holding him back. Last night, Lum was forced into having supper with both of them. And today, as we look in on the little community... We find a very miserable lum just entering the Jotham Down store and library. Listen. Hi, yeah, morning, lum. Morning, Abner. Hey, doggies, I got to thinking maybe you weren't coming down to the store today. <laughs> That's what I've been thinking, too. Huh? wonder if I could pull a draft board about my age and join the Navy. Join the Navy? Yeah. Huh. I'd be willing to start in as a private. Junior grade, even. How long you're away on her too old for that, and you know it. They wouldn't take you in the Navy. No, I reckon not. Of course not. Wish I could go away somewhere, though. Go away? Well, life just ain't worth living in this town no more. Leastways, not for me, it ain't. Oh, uh, you mean on account of Sister Simpson and the widow Abner? Abner, don't mention them two names in my presence again, especially when I'm here. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, excuse me. From now on, them two names are very important. Huh? Verboten. That means don't say them or you'll get a whop on the head. That's what they mean. Oh, 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 oh. Now, let's sit down here and me and you will have a war-saving staff meeting. We ain't had one yet this week. No, we ain't. Uh, what's a uh, meeting going to be about, Long? Well, about selling bonds, naturally. Yeah, yeah. We went two days here without hardly even selling the stamp. So we got to get some new ideas to keep the campaign running. Uh, you don't think that fortune-telling ideas are working no longer, huh? No, we done used that up. We was all right for a while. yeah. You've told might now everybody's fortune in town. Yeah, might now, yeah. Besides, I don't want to take no more chances on you doing any more damage with that. Damage? Yeah, you've got me into all the trouble I can stand. You and your mystical predictions. Making them think I was going to pre-post to them. Well, now, uh, Lom, I just told Sister Simpson. I what... get mad every time I think about it. Well, I just told them, Lom, them verb or whatever they call them. Just that. hash out. We ain't talking about that no more. Oh. It's a closed subject. Open and shut case. It's done, finished, ended, and concluded. Terminated. Er, terminated. Er. Ah. Uh, now, concentrate on some ideas for the campaign. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Ideas, ideas. Let me see. Maybe we ought to study up some kind of a contest. Contest? Yeah, something where folks will have to buy a bond before they can get in it. Or before they can vote for something. Somebody like that. Well, it's just about time to vote on election of the officers at the lodge. No, I don't mean nothing like that. Besides, this has got to be something that the whole town can get in on. Oh. Something everybody's awful interested in. Yeah, let's see. Contest. Whole town interested. Let me think. Think hard. Uh, well, well, I am. Please wait. I'm trying to. Well, close uh, your eyes if you want to, like I'm doing. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, I'll see if that helps in here. Got anything yet? No. No changes. Just a little darker in here than it was, about all. Nothing's coming to me, neither. Huh. County Judge always squints his eyes up whenever he's studying. Yeah, I saw him do so. Yeah. I might have to get me a new co-chairman. Well, now, Lom, it takes me a little time to get my ignorance to working good here. Yeah, yes, it does. Can't just think of stuff all at once. I reckon I wouldn't expect you to be as quick on this stuff as I am anyway. Never was much of a fella for ideas. Well, I get a few ideas now. Once in a while, I believe. No good or so. Huh. You ain't what you'd call a lecturer type, you know that. Well, no. I'm generally so busy thinking of other stuff, but I just don't have much time to think. <laughs> yeah, that's just about what your trouble is. Yeah, that's it. Wish you'd come through with something for this, though. 
the importance. Yeah, I see it long. Yeah. Uh, wh what happened at the supper last night with the widow and sister Simpson? Uh, I mean, uh, well, you know who. Oh, there, there's something else we ain't talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the worst one evening I ever spent in my whole life. And I've spent some awful miserable ones, too. What, did they make sheep eyes and giggle at you and all that stuff? Oh, it was worse than that, Abner. It was. <laughs> Kept calling me, you silly boy. <laughs> bashful thing. Well. Stuff like that. Then they straighten my necktie. Tell me I need the woman to take care of me because that's a helpless. Did you wear a necktie over there? Oh, yeah. I figured I was going to be miserable during the evening anyways. May as well wear a necktie, too. Yeah. First one of them would tie it a little tighter, and then the other one think she'd have to outdo the other one, so she'd tie it a little tighter. Finally, had it tied to where I might not choke to death. Well, I do know. <laughs> Red in the face, my tongue lolling out. My face got right blue. Well, that land say. <laughs> well, it wasn't no laughing matter. <laughs> I knew I could hardly stand to even think about it. <laughs> both of them were scared I was going to be alone with the other one for two seconds, so I had both of them hanging on me and leaning on me the whole time I was over there. Well. How I ever stood up under ordeals like that, I'll never know. Well, the vettles was good, though, weren't they? I don't know. You don't know? No. Well, didn't you eat none of them? I hear they's even going to have meat for the supper. Oh, they had meat, all right. You know what happened? Ah. Uh, Quick as we sat down at the supper table, Sister Simpson moved her chair so she'd be a little closer to where I was sitting. So then the widow moved her chair closer to me. And so Sister Simpson had to move closer than that and kept that up till they had me squeezed in, twitched them so tight I couldn't hardly breathe. <laughs> don't get that left to us all that. <laughs> Abner, stop that laughing. You don't realize what misery I was going through. That great big table in there, and all three of us huddled up together, looked like a setting hen with a bunch of baby chicks. I had my arms pinned down to where I couldn't raise my fork up to my mouth, either, or my knife either. Doggy, that must have been a sight. Abner, I told you to stop laughing. I ain't laughing. I'm just coughing. I got something stuck in my throat. Peculiar sounding cough, that's all I gotta say. Oh, I, I'm the peculiar sounding cougar that is in Pine <laughs> Abner, there's just one thing you gotta promise me, and that is don't tell nobody else about this mix up between Sister Simpson and the Witter. Oh, I ain't told a soul about it, man. Well, nobody. If the folks ever heard about this, I'd be the laughing stock of this whole town. Yeah, well, I won't give it away. I won't. I, won't. I see that you don't, too. No, no. Yeah, now let's get back on our war savings meeting. We got to do something big here because we're behind on our quota, I think. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's see. Now, contest items. Let me think. Uh, yeah, study hard. Yeah, uh, let's see. Wonderful uh, world. Oh, well, I didn't say that. Oh, hold on, Mr. Abner. Hold on, Mr. Long. Yeah, uh, better not oh, interrupt us, Cedric. We're having a meeting now. Oh, good. I thought maybe you was busy. Well, we are busy. Well, say, Mr. Long, which one of them are you going to marry? Ah. Uh, what are you talking about, Cedric? About you sparking at the Witter and Sister Simpson. I'm betting on the Witter. Uh-oh. Just a minute here. What about you hear about that, Cedric? Oh, I heard Mama and Papa talking about it at the breakfast table this morning. <laughs> they heard it from Ms. Bates and Ms. Barton told her about it. Oh, my goodness. Mama says she's glad to hear you're finally going to get hitched and settled down. Uh, Cedric, you better not talk no more now. Papa, he says you ought to choose the widow, but Mama says Sister Simpson would make you the best woman, she uh, says. Cedric, just be quiet now. Forget Mama about says it. Sister Simpson talk arm off of you. Oh, oh, they got in an awful big argument over it, boy. I thought they was going to separate one another. Uh, now, now, that's enough now, Cedric. Just be quiet now. I agree, Mr. Abner. Now I know I'm going to join the Navy. Well, now, Lo, maybe everybody ain't found out about it yet. Well, they will, though. Just give them time. Oh, they might not. Ain't no one thing this town loves to do better than sit around and gossip. Yeah, well, um, I don't believe they're going to gossip about oh, this. Yeah, somebody else. Oh, yeah. Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Well, howdy, howdy Grandpa. Yeah, congratulations, Lo. Oh, my. Oh, my. Glad to hear you final going to take the fatal step. <laughs> Of course, you're going to have an awful hard time making up your mind to them, too. I'll say that for you. Uh, Grandpa, how about a game of checkers? Oh, we can play that pitching toad game some other time, Abner. i got to give Rom some advice right now. Well, I wouldn't do that now, Grandpa. I don't need no advice from you or nobody else, Grandpa. No. Yes, you do, Rom. I don't want to see you make a mistake. Now, Charity says the winner's the one for you, but them wild young'uns of hers that drive you plumb stark raving mad crazy. I take Sister Simpson, Mom. Charlie Redfield agrees with me on that, too. 
You can just ask him. Is Harley Redfield, does he know about this too? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Everybody's discussing it. Oh, my. Every which way you go, that's all you hear. Which one is Lom going to choose? Hey, uh, Lom, <laughs> wait a minute. Lom, come back here now. Don't go out in the feed room, Lom. I'm come going back. out the back way and I'm going home and hide. How? If anybody asks for me, tell them I'm somewhere in the uh, Pacific. But wait a minute now. Lom, don't leave. Lom! Hey, Lom! He's leaving, Mr. Abner. Oh, I know he is. Yeah, he's leaving, Abner. In fact, he's, he's left. I can see that with my own eyes, Grandpa. Your telephone's ringing, too, Mr. Abner. I can see that, too, Cedric. I ain't blind. She thinks wrong with me. Hello, John, I'm down to the library talking. Yeah, what is it, Ulysses? Huh? You want to do what? What the slums all fired upset about, Abner? Why, we ain't oh, uh, Abner, holding no election. Uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You listen. I right, know that you just gave me an idea there. That's yes, sir, you sure did. Yeah, I must have said something. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I'll explain it to you later, you lissies. It, it's a good or no. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. I know that I believe I got it, Grandpa. I sure have. <laughs> you got money. Why, this is just what old Lum was looking for. The whole town can get in on it. Everybody will be interested. What in the world are you talking about, Ed? Uh, Grandpa, uh, you can print for the good, can't you? Oh, I don't like to brag on myself, but I can do it about as good as anybody I've ever seen. Or that. Well, I know it's good for you. You're working for the Pine Ridge War Saving Staff starting right now. Uh, Cedric, you can help him, too. Oh, good. Am I on the committee, too? Yes, sir. Hurry up, uh, Grandpa. Now, start printing up a great big sign. Oh, that I reckon Ulysses ought to get the credit for this. Big sign, huh? Yeah, I never would have thought of this idea if he hadn't called up and said he was putting his vote on Sister Simpson. <laughs> Have her simmer down and tell me what you wanted printed on the sign. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, now, across the top there, put, help Lom make up his mind. And then underneath, like, buy a war bond and vote for your favorite, Ms. Simpson or Ms. Abernathy. I don't guess we'll just let the old Lom a wife. And I know he'll like this idea because he was the one that wanted to get up a contest. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I know his Lom, I believe you're right. Well, see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lom and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, after Sister Simpson and Widow Abernathy were told by fortune teller Abner that Lum was about to propose to them, they both started making a strong play for him. Then the whole town started advising Lum which of the women he should choose for his mate, and out of that came co-chairman Abner's big war bond contest to determine the leading contender for Lum's hand. As we look on the little community today, we find Abner in the John Down store and library, Grandpappy Spears just entered. Now, come in, Grandpa. Yeah, here, Abner. You better take this money and put it in your cash drawer. Lord me, have you taken in that much already? Oh, yeah, I ain't got room to keep it out there in that war bond stand. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm feared I'll lose some of it, Abner. Yeah, sure. Well, here, and I'll put it away in a safe place. Yeah, you better take care of it. That's give her mint money. Yeah, I don't worry. You ought to keep some of it out there to make change with, though. Yeah, well, I got enough for that, I think. Awful. Now, who's ahead now, Grandpappy? Is Sister Simpson still leading? No, no, the widow passed her up. She yeah, did. Yeah, got about three votes lead on Sister Simpson what? now. <laughs> I know that the folks are sure taken to this idea of mine. Oh, there's a good one. Yes, sir. I all respected that I was a little bit of a genius. Now, I know I am. Good well, for me. Who I don't know about that so much. Uh, There's one question I want to ask you, Abner. Yeah, sure. sure. Is it all right for a body to vote more than one time? Vote more than one? Yeah. Why, sure. Just as long as they buy a bond, why, 
they get a vote for every bond they buy. That's the best part of this whole idea. Oh, I see. Well, I was wondering about that. Yeah. That little Ronald Abernathy's come in and bought himself five bonds. He has. And voted for his mama every time. <laughs> well, natural. And I'll tell you, that uh, widow will keep sending him in, too, as long as her money holds out. She will do anything to get herself a man, Grandpa. No, yes, yeah, she would. <laughs> You know, Abner, I've heard some awful peculiar ways of fellas getting wise, but this is the first time I ever heard of a whole town getting together and electing one for Yeah, time. oh, this is a brand new idea. I'll bound you this will put us clean over the cordy, too. Well, if it keeps up the way it started out, it ought to. Oh, no doubt about it. No, no. I can't understand why Lum don't like it better. Well, you know, Long Grandpap, if he don't study up an idea himself, why, he don't think it's any good. Oh, he's stubborn. headed as a blue-nosed mule. He's a good man, but he's stubborn. Is he speaking to you yet? Oh, won't even look at me, hardly. See, he's hard Cedric for his private secretaries now. Whenever he's got something to say to me, why, he has Cedric tell it to me. Oh, for the long he says. Yeah, he'd love to throw this contest right out the window. And me with it, I reckon. <laughs> But, of course, he don't dare to on account of he's afraid that folks will think he ain't patriotic. Yet. Oh, you got him right where you want him. <laughs> got him over a barrel, so yeah. you got him. But I believe it's a good thing for him. Good it's thing. time old mom was settling down, getting married. Why, sure it is. Yeah, he's been a bachelor too long. Yeah, too long. He needs a family. That's what he needs. Yeah. Family's a great comfort to you in your old age. I know mine will be when I get old. When you get old? Yes, sir, a great comfort. Huh. And that's just what Lum needs. Oh, yes, he does. Ain't no doubt about that. And whilst I wouldn't take out neither Sister Simpson or the widow Abernathy for myself, I believe that either one of them will make old Lum a good woman. Leastways, they'll be just about as good as a fella Lum's age can expect to get. Yeah, you're right there, Abner. Yeah. Yeah. Lum ain't no spring chicken no more, you know. He can't be too choosy. Oh, no, he can't, no. Well, I better get back out there to the stand. Yeah, yeah. Looks like Elvira Seastrunk's waiting to buy a bond out there. Why, naturally. Well, her. Well, she'll be back more than once, too. You just watch. How you know she will? Well, her and Sister Simpson is blood kin. They're relay. Oh, that's right. Sure. Yeah, some sort of cousin. I don't know. Kissing cousin or something. Well, I better get out there. Yeah, well, I'll take over for you as quick as Lom gets back to the store. He's out making a survey of the payroll saving plan or something like that. Uh -huh. uh -huh. He says that's the only dignified way to sell bonds. Uh, say, are you marking up the score on that big blackboard out there? Yeah, I got Gomer Bates doing that for me. Oh, oh. I think that was your phone ringing. Yeah, right? I'll tell him to it. I'll, I'll see you later. All right, Grandpap. Oh, that shut down the old pine tree. Hello, John Down Store Library. Cool Chairman Abner Peabody doing the talking. Mom? Oh, well, uh, according to the latest figures, I just talked to Grandpappy Spears, uh, Widder Abernathy is ahead now. Yes, Mom. Uh, three votes, I believe it is. Uh-huh. Come on, Cedric, I want to dictate some letters. Yeah, you. just now. Uh, what's that? Well, honey, Mr. Abner. Oh, excuse me. Why, sure, you can vote as many times as you want to, just Don't so you buy a bond every time. Oh, yes, it'll be nice for Lum to get married and settle down. Sit down there, Cedric. Yeah. Make a note to remind me to have that phone taken out of here, Cedric. Yes, Mom. Yeah, well, all right, Miss Goshen. Oh, not at all, not at all. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. Yeah, howdy, Lum. I said howdy, Lum. Cedric, would you inform Mr. Peabody that I'm busy and ain't got time to talk to Raff Riff? Mr. Abner, Mr. Lom says to tell you that, uh, well, that stuff he just said then. Oh, he did, huh? Well, you tell Mr. Edwards that Mr. Peabody says sassy press. Well, he says sassy press. Cedric, you don't need to put so much feeling into your work. Hold on. Is there any answer? No, from now on we'll just ignore Mr. Peabody. Huh, I'll ignore being ignored, too. As far as we're concerned, Cedric, Mr. Peabody ain't here at all. He don't exist. No more. <laughs> all right, Cedric, sit down at the table there and take a letter. What about so I take it to you? You don't take it nowhere yet. I'm going to dictate it to you. Ooh. Well, I'll write down what you say, huh? Yeah. I'd love to see that letter when it's done. Uh, dear employees. 
Well, that'd be something nice to read. Uh, no, wait. Start it out this way. Right. An open letter to all working employees. <laughs> Who it may concern. Small. Oh, yeah, right, put that down. I'm going to send out a big batch of copies of this letter. I'll tell why folks ought to sign up with the payroll savings plan. And that's a lot more dignified way of selling bonds than some other ideas I've heard about. Uh, ain't it too to hard job you some fellas can get? You got that down yet, Sidri? Yes, Mom, I think so. All right, uh, I don't need to tell you how important it is for you to buy all the war bonds you can. Smart ass. You all know that the most you can lend is the least you can do as your part in this fight for freedom. But are you lending the most you can? Look yourself in the face and ask yourself that question. Wait a minute, Mr. Lama. I don't quite get all that. Oh, well, what part didn't you get? Oh, got everything that comes after the, the first two words. For goodness sake, well, pay better attention this time. This one. Let's see, now, I forgot how I said it. I don't need to tell you uh, how important it is for you to buy all the war bonds you can. You all know that the most part you can lend is the least you can do is your Abner, will you hate that up? I can't even think straight. Uh, I mean, Cedric, tell Mr. Peabody to cut out that thing. If that's what it is. I don't know how Mr. Edwards can hear me singing when I ain't even here. Ain't even here. According to Mr. Edwards, I don't exist. Them's his own words. <laughs> well, them words still go, too. New paragraph, Cedric. Mom. End there. Uh... Lots of you fellas signed up with the payroll savings plan some time ago. But since then, you've got raises and there's less stuff to buy with your money. So why don't you go to your boss and tell him to start taking out a bigger share of your wages to be invested in war bonds? Remember, us home fronters will have to do a lot of, long way to match the sacrifices of our boys on the battlefield. So I say to you, Abner, if you don't stop that singing, I'm going to whop you. That's going to be sort of hard to do, whopping a fella that ain't here. <laughs> Two paragraphs, Cedric. Well, I ain't got that first year. Well, you can catch up later. I'll sort of think this out as I say it anyway. That's how ready it is, Oh, let's see. Man, Lots man. of you younger folks have just recently started to work and earn money. And the first thing you ought to do is sign up with the payroll saving plan. The only way to save money. Besides that, you'll be helping to keep down inflation and winning uh, the Cedric, war. Cedric, I believe you ought to tell Mr. Edwards that that was his ring. Well, answer it, Abner, and cut out this nonsense. I'd love to answer it the worst way, but I ain't here. Ain't here? No, oh, sir. Oh, for goodness sake. I'm so far away, I don't believe I even hear it ring. That's just the bugs are fighting. Wait a second, Cedric. Don't so be a good idea. Do everything that is to be done. Hope you keep this up. Hello, John, I'm down store in the library. I'm Edwards talking. Oh, What's that? No, I don't know who's ahead in the contest, and what more, I don't care. <laughs> Goodbye. Right. Too bad I weren't here. I could have told them that the winter's ahead now. All right, Cedric, where was I at now? Well, I don't know where he is at, but I ain't got past the first three words yet. Fine secretary, I guess. All right, we'll start all over again. Uh, wage earners of Pine Ridge. I appeal to you as patriarchs. Oh, uh, honey, Grandpa, come in. Uh, come in. Jiminy, Heather. Uh-huh. Look what Ed Beckley sent over from the drugstore. Ed Beckley? Yeah, a pigeon toad quarter ice cream. Ice cream? Yes, sir. Well. Yes, sir. He said it was for us war bond workers. I dog is good for old Ed. I was just sitting here wishing for something like that. Uh, here, uh, give it to me, Grandpa, and I'll divide it up for uh, Just a minute there. I'll take that ice cream. Uh, I'll do the dividing. Uh, Cedric, look in that box back of the counter and, and get out about three spoons. Three spoons? There's four of us here, Mom. All I can count is three. Me and Grandpa and Cedric. Well, what about me? You. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry for Abner, but you ain't here. You said so yourself. Three spoons, Cedric.